Hey everybody, <laughs> welcome to 101 Weekly, episode 12, and uh, we're all smiles here in the studio at the moment because uh, the way things are going at the moment now, news reels, content creators, is, uh, hold on a second, hold on. We're all smiles here in the studio at the moment because uh, the way things are going at the moment now, news reels, content Right, sorry. Yeah, the way things are going at the moment now, uh, newsreels, content creators on YouTube is going to be the crux of entertainment for everybody moving forward. Most companies are already, countries are already locked down. So, you know, here we are. And we got a lot to discuss. Uh, half of it is going to be football related. The other half is going to be non-football related and really talking about the virus and everybody's experiences. And also, we'll probably offer up some advice for you guys in terms of what to do with your everyday uh, outings uh, as far as the, the, the virus goes. So uh, look forward to that later on. Stick around and let us know what you think of it. Welcome to everybody who's already in the chat. And uh, right now, just want to welcome the panel. Tony's late. Again, <laughs> Tony uh, is late again. So I just want to welcome the panel. Um, Bertram from New York. How are you getting on, mate? How are you doing? I, I am doing well. Like everyone else, it's, it's Corona City, it's Corona Country, it's Corona Time. Small viruses with big impacts seem to be dominating the headlines, dominating the world. And we don't have a strategy across the globe and or within countries, meaningfully enough, to allow us to feel comfortable or reduce this anxiety and fear that we, that everyone seems to be feeling. And there are a lot of stories, I've experienced one this morning, a lot of stories going around in terms of what's transpiring. So hopefully we'll have some good dialogue about football, but also, as you said, I'm looking forward to people's perspective and what they're seeing and hearing in the different parts of the world. Excellent, excellent. And Ebony, uh, welcome back from Atlanta. Uh, how are you getting Thank on you. at the moment? Fine, you know, I'm, I'm not uh, panicking like a lot of people, what I'm doing is um, I'm just staying calm. I'm just carrying on with life as normal. But I am worried about the people who have it already. And I'm also worried about some of the um, the, the elderly people who, um, unfortunately, you know, this whole this whole COVID-19, it's the people that it's actually taken the lives of have mainly been elderly people in the UK. But then they've also had is said that they've also had underlining problems as well. So I'm worried about those people. I'm worried about their families. I'm worried about anybody who, who who's caught it. But but with regards to the whole panic buying nonsense, it's, it's just ridiculous. I mean, I think people assume that COVID-19 gives people diarrhea. It doesn't, mm -hmm. okay? It, it really doesn't because it's not one of the symptoms. Dry cough, dry throat, I think an achy body as well is part of the part of the symptoms, but diarrhea is not one of them. And people have just gone hell, hell on earth to, to go out and buy toilet paper to the point where I can't even. I probably go to test a uh, Costco and not be not be able to buy any toilet paper. But <laughs> but uh, but otherwise, um, I'm I'm just keeping up with all of the stuff that I I do anyway, and that's keeping up with basic hygiene, and that's all we can do right now. Um, if pe and I've seen people wear masks um, on public transport. I've seen people wear masks um, out on the street as well. While, while I was in the states, you know, people were wearing, wearing masks as well. So I can understand that. But then people need to understand that masks don't actually don't stop you from getting it. Yeah, and they, also, only they only cover about twenty percent of the impact. Exactly, yeah. and and also. Um, while you're keeping clean and you're and you're keeping up with the basic hygiene, other people around you have to do it as well. So mm -hmm. you could be the only person in the room, and you're the only person that's uh, keeping up with basic hygiene, and other people aren't. So you will still get it, mm -hmm. despite the fact that you you are keeping up with the basic of basic hygiene. So, but yeah, and that's what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, and we'll we'll go more into the, the the ethics of the coronavirus as once we get over the football stuff. Um, but for now, yes, everybody's feeling the heat. There's so much changes going on. Countries are varying in terms of their policies, and because this is the real first time that this has ever happened, I know we've had the uh, swine flu and <clears throat> and we've had other things that have hit us. But to to hit us on this scale, this is new for everybody. So listen, let's. Uh, 
talk about what's going on with the football world first. And uh, just to keep everybody reminded, everybody where we are, Arsenal are actually on an eight game unbeaten run at the moment. Uh, four wins, four draws, which is the longest current run in the Premier League as it is. Still unbeaten, as everybody knows. And uh, we're coming off the back of three clean sheets in the last four games. But where we are at the moment is uh, we need to cover, obviously, the Mikel Arteta reaction. And actually, there's quite a lot of reactions because I'm a Utah Jazz fan and everybody knows that Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell uh, were the first two NBA players to catch it in the same team. Uh, Rudy Gobert got a smack on the hand because of a, a joke that he was playing in a press conference where when they said he's got the virus, he actually smothered his hands over the table and the microphone and everything, which the journalists didn't think was very nice. But as far as Mikel Arteta, let's get your reaction first on uh, on on that, Bertram. So uh, I'm going to touch Rudy Gobert first, which jumped to Mikel, which is what Rudy did actually worked out brilliantly. Um, and people don't seem to see the part that came out of it, which is if Rudy hadn't touched those mics, we may not be where we are with this league got cancelled or postponed. And it should have been postponed. This reactive way of addressing this situation is asinine and is not strategic, it's not thoughtful. And is we had the same thing in the UK where Arteta had the virus, we have a few more people had the virus, and all of a sudden we cancel the season or postpone the season. The season got is a reactive situation where instead of being thoughtful and strategic and say, you know what, crowd gathering is what we're trying to prevent. Some people utilize 150 people, some utilize 500. We wait until someone actually caught the virus, then we say, oh, let's postpone this league. But actually, it's being spread already. Yeah, yeah, you know the, the the head of the Greece of Olympiakos got the virus. Um, it may be where I said it got it from. We don't know, and then I keep cascading and spreading. And this thing is exponential in terms yeah. of its reach and how it spreads. So you can't be reactive. You have to actually almost be draconian to address it. I think the situation is unfortunate. I mean, for him specifically, and based on what his wife has said, it seemed like he has mild symptoms. Yeah, yeah. he doesn't seem to be of the dangerous type. As previously indicated, it seemed to affect more seasoned, I'm going to call it, persons. Mm -hmm. And I see it in some quarters where people say, more seasoned persons, so we don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Well, it's almost like you disregard the lives of the more seasoned person. So that makes no sense to me. Um, but you mentioned us being unbeaten. We may be unbeaten until the end of the season, because the season to me is ended. Right? Yeah, literally. Yeah. I don't, see yeah. How, <laughs> <laughs> I don't see how we get, I don't see how we move forward from here. Um, it's unfortunate Arteta got it. But maybe, as I said before, with Rudy Gobert, in terms of what he did and uh, what our Teta situation entailed, it may be a good thing that we pause as a globe, because it affects other countries, other leagues, mm -hmm. pause the globe, have government be, uh, we all understand the economic implications of shutting down countries, or shutting down the globe. We understand people's livelihood. We understand people don't have childcare and all that. There's a lot of different things to think about. But what's more important, people's lives, and or having some disruption for a short period of time, say two weeks or three weeks. Um, have a strategy where you go out and inform people about this, tell them to buy stuff, I didn't buy it otherwise, because I was out yesterday and it's a madhouse. Like, it's terrible. I have never, mm. I've been on this earth a long time, I have never seen it. I went to a store yesterday, give you an example, BJ's, which is a huge yeah, I know discount BJ's. chain in the US. Yeah. They had 25 hours open. The store runs almost like a football field in terms of the length of the store. Mm. Every aisle except two was packed. And the reason why two were, were packed was because those two cut off in the middle because an aisle, the all aisle cut across. Yeah. That's, I was in there for 20 minutes. Most people were in there for two and a half hours. Immediately I tried to figure out how to circumvent the line. So this was ridiculous. You couldn't even move in the store. And realize people weren't being thoughtful. Yeah, They were just focusing on where is the line that gets up front. And it's the same thing with the coronavirus, which is how thoughtful are you? How strategic are you? How are you addressing the situation? And unless the world come together to fight a global disease, we're going to have this disparate way of doing it. Yeah, very yeah. differentiated. Perspe you know, China is not opening its, its economy because they're saying it's a security. It hasn't cured yeah. anything. Who knows yeah. what the news is there. But they seem to have made improvement. There were stories about Taiwan, for example, how well they have done from January, managing the disease compared to a South Korea or compared to us in the U.S. where, you know, the school system in the U.S. hasn't closed down yet in terms of New York City public schools. Mm -hmm. I'm taking my, my nephews and niece out of school tomorrow. I'm going to do my own individual protest because it's asinine. Yeah. Private schools have closed. Yeah. The universities have closed, but the 
high schools haven't closed. And you're sitting here thinking, what are you thinking? So yeah, look, and, Arteta, and, and, hopefully we can, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and that's the thing, you know, some leaders, not all of them, some leaders are acting out of uh, the economy, out of money. And uh, I'm sorry to say this, but although they're trying to gather as much money and save as much businesses as possible, the bell has already been rung. And the bell, as Lex Luthor said in Batman versus Superman, the bell cannot be unrung. The, we are going into <laughs> yeah. a, we are going into a recession, and there's nothing anyone can do about that. And no amount of panic from each any government will be able to save small businesses. At the moment, you know, small businesses is much like how we are at home with our mortgages. Some people are okay and would be able to pay their mortgage free for four, five, six months in advance. Some people, though, and and the the, st the stats is sixty two percent of people are living paycheck to paycheck. That's bad. And some businesses, if they if they're not making any money for two or three weeks, they will go down, and that's what the the governments are afraid of. That's yeah, and look, just like how Trump had a strategy for the farmers when he decided to have a trade war with China and try to supplement them for a while. Some still go out of business, but he was able to supplement them with resources. You got to think about your economy holistically. Industries like airline industry or restaurant industry, hospitality going to hurt significantly. Find a way to sort of assist it some shape or form. But you cannot, um, you cannot, you cannot maintain the status quo. Yeah. There is no way you can do so. So, um, Arteta, hope we get better speedily, and hopefully we get back to football in a month's time. But realistically, I don't see it happening. Yeah, I, I have to agree with you. There was some talk yesterday in the 101 forums where people were heavily talking about this date of the 3rd of April. And I jumped in. I was reading all the comments, as I normally do. And I just thought, hold on, everyone's saying the season's going to be back on the on, on the 3rd of, uh, of April. And I've been told specifically by writers and football <laughs> agents that, th that that date is just another date for the FA to come back to the table and review. There are many sports, tennis, rugby, that have either completely postponed and cancelled their seasons and that or have adjusted their seasons to start back up in the summer. Uh, we're talking about May, June, some some leagues even July. So for us to think that there's going to be football in the next two weeks is is very naive. Um, considering if some players have taken sick, remember we're still in the incubation period, so we we still don't know. But if players are taken sick, then you're going to have a strong amount of percentage of players that cannot play. <laughs> You know, and uh, what are you going to do if your main stars are out, if your manager's out, if your trainer's out, if your doctor's out, the medical staff's ill? W what are you going to do? How are you going to going to make that work? And and if some teams are fitter than others, then that straight away is a misbalance. So I, I really don't know how they're going to work it. But like you, Bertram, I don't expect football to be back on the 3rd of April. I think that, and we're going to talk about that. There's a section where we're going to say, how do we end the season? And we're going to get the uh, rough ideas from everybody around. Um, Ebony, what's your feelings on the Mikel Arteta situation? Um, I was, uh, it, I did, well, initially I was shocked, but then, um, but then I heard that the Olympiacos manager contracted the um COVID-19 as well so and again and remember be, Arteta, mm. Arteta never met him so Arteta got it from yeah. somewhere else yeah so, yeah so so but in some is somehow he contracted the the, the, the COVID-19 I was a bit shocked but then I thought okay all right let, let's see how this pans out um, and having heard from his wife also, you know, she, she was saying that, you know, she's fine, he's fine, he's, he's getting better, the children are, are fine as well, the children, are, I don't think the children are affected, I don't think she's affected, but he's he's actually keeping himself um, under lock and key, so to speak, um, for why, a few days. Why, wifey has got this, man, wifey's, send, wifey's <laughs> sending him his, his porridge underneath the door flap. Yeah, there, there you go, darling. <laughs> I'm not coming anywhere near you. <laughs> but yeah, she. Uh, but yeah, so she gave everybody on Instagram, you know, some reassurance. That, you know, he's he's better, and I hope he gets better as soon as possible. Um, with regards to uh, the country and shutting down and the FA, I know we're going to come back to that. I I just think that 
if the 3rd of April is a day that they're going to is a sit down and let's see where we go from here day and so be it if it's a case of the um the season ending then so be it because you can't have half a team play it well and then and then uh, mixing the team with um players that don't regularly play first team it's it, it's not going to work mm. um i i just think that if the season has to end now and this is this has got nothing to do with liverpool winning the league by the way this is about this is about you know people's health this is about people's well-being so if it's a case of suspending the season until august then so be it because because the the, the season ends in may so if it has to be early and early or a, it's a case of um end it early and bearing in mind that you've got liverpool who've won the league you might as well just give them a title with regards to the relegation um just suspend that but then bring, uh, but then bring forward the, the, t- the top two teams who are at the top of the championship, so yeah, that you'll gonna, have. That, that's going to cause a lot of havoc and 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 panic yeah. among the teams. Yeah, I mean we're, yeah. we're going to come on to that. Uh, you know, the next seg- segment yeah. is uh, the season might not be completed, so we'll talk about that. And then yeah. after that, we'll talk about how do we end the season. Uh, our but, own but, different opinions. But I, but I think um, you know the fact that the um the fa have waited i'm not gonna i'm not gonna have a go at them too much because maybe and we we've we've not been in discussion in we've not been there when we've had these discussions Mm. um maybe they wanted to wait until the government have said look you know close down but i'm glad they didn't i'm glad that they actually took the decision themselves and decided you know what let's just suspend the season (laughs) let's because you know th- this is an epidemic and yeah. and it's also a pandemic mm. so therefore let and there's too many players that are sick and then we don't know about the rest of the rest of each team from where those players come so therefore let's just suspend the season see how things go um and we'll take things from there and we'll take things from the third of april but I, i'm glad that you know the fa have taken that decision in their own hands like a lot of companies have actually taken the taken the decision themselves and decided we'll look after ourselves because they know what to do. Like 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 the rest of us, they know what to do. If they're waiting for the government to tell them what to do, and the, and the fact that you know people might be waiting for the government, the government don't really give to a castle main forex about anyone but themselves. Mm. All they're thinking about is uh, the economy, Brexit. It's it, it, you know this is the whole. And I don't want to. They're trying to. Your internet connection is going in and out a little bit there, Ebony. Yeah. yeah. So they they try. So they're doing everything they can to make as much money as they can, and then. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, just about. It is cutting out a little bit. It is cutting out a little bit. So listen. Um, let's move on to Tony. Tony, welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Tony, you still there? I think Tony it's might be like having frozen. Yeah, Tony looks like he's having a little bit of problem as well. Oh, he's there. He's there. Yeah, Tony, uh, what's your it's thoughts like on uh, Mikel Arteta? Frozen. It seems to be a little uh, bit okay. stutterish. Uh, yeah, I okay, so I'm going to just speak and hopefully you'll catch up with me. Is that okay? Yep. Okay, so, um, yeah, it's a real uh, shame what's going on. Um, Deeply gutted to be in this situation where pretty much all sport has been going on, which is my number one sport. but yeah, it's a shame because obviously a lot of my time that I spend watching, spent um, doing other things. And uh, funny enough, uh, you know, where I would normally be doing sport today, I, I actually just uh, watched my son play football and then afterwards I fell asleep. <laughs> um, sorry to be six seconds behind, apparently. Yeah, I mean, the way I see it is. 
what will be um unfortunately um you know these decisions to the people who are in in the uh the powers that be um we as fans there's not there's nothing we can do we can't petition raise alarm all we can do is hope that um the virus doesn't affect us all individually although uh, my own feelings on the virus is that obviously the way the British government are, de are dealing with the situation, I think they kind of want it so that we can kind of build our immune system and fight it away. kind of does make sense. like, you know, if you're going to get a shoe, they actually give you a little bit of flu and your system builds up its resistance against that. But, yeah, it's an interesting time. It's uh, I know that's going on. Obviously, there's lots of huge repercussions to busy. Um, you know, me myself as a teacher, I'm affected. Um, you know, I'm kind of expecting the schools to get uh, within the next five days. Uh, so that would affect me in quite a big way. Um, yeah, so I'm, 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 I'm just hoping that we can all get over this thing as quickly as possible. However, um, I don't see this um, in any way, shape or form being fixed by April the 3rd because that's just pretty much way too soon. Um, I can see this extending into, into, you know, at least May. And I know certain sports have, have suspended until at least May. So with that being in mind... Um, you know, the uh, the season curtailed, but you know, it is what it is, and we just get on and hope that we can get our fix of football back again as soon as possible, right? So, uh, basically, we uh, we've got two seg segments here which I'm going to build into one, and and the first seg segment I'll just do it as a statement. Uh, it says that FA says a season might not be completed. And that's really their hard look at the fact that it may not happen, that this thing is just the beginning, then it's actually going to get worse. And while other countries are showing some signs of slowdown, and this is South Korea, China, um, Italy cases are actually starting to go down a little bit as well. And that's just because the fact that they have just quarantined and shut the whole thing down. I mean, China, take for instance, was having an average of 2,300 cases per day. And now, yesterday was 15, the day before that was 10, the day before that was 11. They're literally, their cases are nearly non-existent now. That's just because they've just shut it all down. So that specifically shows that you can have some signs of recoveries with the right decisions. Unfortunately, with Boris leaving everything open, we are not even close to slowing this thing down. And remember, it's only just the cases that we've heard about the testing Apparently, you know, we're testing up to 10,000 people a day. And the more tests that goes out, the more people are, are, are going to be under this, this virus. And I'm hearing figures of 15 to 20,000 people already might be infected. And just think those people who haven't been tested or infected, they're still being told to go out to work. And then it's just going to be more and more and more. So literally... While the FA says it might not be completed because this, this thing is gonna, gonna go on forward, we need to find out now how are we gonna end the season. And that brings a lot of problems and issues um, towards the, the football. Because first of all, before I wanna before I pass around you guys, Ebony, it looks like we've just lost Ebony. Um, before I pass around to you guys, um, we got to think about promotion from the championship and the relegation to in the Premier League. That is a huge financial commodity. So if you're saying to somebody who's in maybe someone like Watford, who might be slightly in or might be slightly out, you know, you're talking about a massive financial, it's about 120 million for next season, which could be the difference between life or death for a club. It could be the difference between going under or surviving for a club. So when you're looking about something like that, you have to come to a decision that's going to make everybody happy and you're never really going to. I mean, delaying the season and forgetting and about all the cups and competitions might be a way forward because then that nullifies all of, all of those events. And what it does is essentially means that you can play two, two or three league games a week. 
Yeah, it means that you'll definitely have a league game on a Saturday or Sunday and you'll definitely have a league game on a Wednesday. And if you do that, you can actually make up the time. But uh, I want to find out, first of all, from you guys in terms of the FA saying that this season might might, might not be completed. Do you think, and, let, and let's go around this quickly so we can jump into how we end the season. Um, Bertram, quickly, just a minute from you to say, do you think that the season should be uh, completely shut down or do you think that we should carry on? Um, I'm of the view that the 20, the 2019, 20, 2020 season never happened. Oh wow! So that's that's a void. We're gonna we're gonna come into the options as well. But with the, that, uh, unless it. Liverpool can mathematically tell you they win the league today, you cannot award them the league. It makes absolutely no sense. Yeah, because there's, there's nine games. If you could lose, if you could lose it, then you can't be awarded the league. That makes absolutely no sense. No matter how much a front runner you are, yeah. and yeah. you can say the same thing for close proximity between the teams at the bottom. You can't tell Watford are going down or Norwich are going down because mathematically they could still stay up. Forget about financial implications. Similar with the championship, yeah. which is Leeds may be leading, West Brom may be leading, but frankly, if you look at it, other teams could pass them because they have mathematically finished in the top two to automatic, get automatic promotion. I have no idea how you then justify hurting three, four, five teams in the championship that have a chance to make top six and also giving awarding Liverpool the league, demoting Norwich, or letting them stay in and add two more teams when it goes against the grain of what you're trying to achieve, which is fairness, Parity, objectivity, mm. it makes no sense. So from where I sit, there was no 2019-2020 season at all. It's disbanded, just like in the NBA or any other league that's out there. We're trying to play this game of saying, we're going to wait a month. I know you said I should be short. I'm sorry. <laughs> wait a month or two. No, you got, you got a, minute, a month or two. A minute, a minute's fine because cause this, it, is it, just it, a, yeah. this is just a question of <laughs> it might not be completed. Would, would, would you agree with that or not? Obviously, you don't. You think it should just go ahead? No, what I mean is that the league is, is there was no league in 2020. It will not be completed. This will not be finished by April. I've been working at home for about a week now. I'm supposed to be working at home until April 12th. And I smile saying, I don't deem myself to be an essential worker. Yeah. I'm not selling trades. I'm not a trader. And if that's the case, only essential work is going to be on the street. I'll be here working remotely for a while. So um, okay. I don't see that happening for the league starting at month's time. Okay, so Tony, the FA says that season might not be completed. Would you agree with that? Um, the season won't be completed by the time the season is due to com be completed. Um, literally, you're talking about, well, how, how do you logistically extend the league into June, July? If they can do that, I'm at that. I'll happily watch football all year round. Obviously, that means that other competitions then are moved into next year, like Europa, uh, World Cup qualifying, etc. A knock-on effect. Um, if they can't do that, do they wait until the start of next this season, or do they just write it off? As I'm saying, you cannot make any. Um, decision on where the league title goes or who gets relegated because with everybody capable of doing something positions of those of those top and bottom places do anything and I'll, I'll also mention that should we revert back to or should we call the season null and void do I think Arsenal qualify as um the champ into the Champions League, having finished fifth last. Mm, they might do that as well. They might do that. Um, I, 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 I can answer one of the questions though. Um, no, they won't be able to take it into into July. It would be impossible for them to do that because what they're then doing is they're going into next season scheduling. So we know that uh, uh, teams like West Ham and Wolves have actually played uh, Europa qualifiers in July. Um, so in order to go into that period, it would mean disrupting next season's schedule, which they don't want to do. And, and, and if it came to the point where it was going to be prolonged, you know, let's, let's say that the players need two weeks holiday. That's in their contract. They're going to get that regardless. And then they normally need two weeks of preseason. So that's already a month. 
And then after that preseason, while it's going on, then the qualifiers for European games. We know ourselves in the Champions League, isn't it? We've played qualifiers on the 31st of July. We've played it on the 2nd of August in the Champions League when we were in the Champions League. So consider that you've got all of that to happen. It would be impossible for us to delay it that far because you, you, essentially what you could do is you could delay it, but then you have to wipe out the Champions League and the Europa for, for the next season. And that's something which I know that they're, dis they're going to discuss on Tuesday this week. Europa's going to get around the table and they're going to say, well, do we extend everything for this season and then wipe out the Champions League and the Europa for 2021? Um, we might get some shocks as far as that goes. But uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely some in 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 interesting questions there, Tony. Uh, Ebony, uh, the FA said the season might not be completed. Would you agree with that assessment? Is Ebony still with us? Look like she's frozen. Yeah, it looks like she's frozen and uh, she is kind of come back in. Hold on, there we go. Yeah, I think we've got uh, Ebony. Um, the FA says that the season might not be completed. Would you agree with that assessment? Um, if by the 3rd of April they haven't come to any decision, then yeah. You might as well just scrap it because it's it's pointless. I mean, as you know, what was said, you can't go in, you can't extend the season beyond May because then what happens to the break that they have, uh, the players have? What happens to pre-season touring? Um, I I I just think that if they had they had they said, um, you know, we'll come back in uh, by the end of the month or maybe by the twentieth of of March which is next week, practically, then, OK, you may be able to carry on the season. But by the 3rd of April, you know, if, if, the, if, if the nine games by the 4th of April, it's pointless. And I know Liverpool fans are going to be really cheesed off of the fact that, you know, that it may turn out that they have, they, after all, won their... Yep. Yeah, so, um, and again, cares, good cares to see you in the chat. He's saying we will get a lot of talk around money and obviously competitions. And uh, good to see Jal um, in the chat as lots well. Of schedules. Evening. You uh, might sorry. as well just scrap it. Sorry, Ebony. And you, start all you, over again next season. Ebony, sorry, you flunked out there a bit. Um, so, uh, uh, again, Kez, Kez is raising an interesting point there, which I'm going to talk about. And it's about the money situation. And you're probably all wondering how that's going to work out so 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 let's remember this sky and bt have already paid their tv money to the premier league club so the clubs essentially have already been paid in lieu been paid in advance um but they can say they have every right sky and bt to say we want our money back yeah um and that would be proportionally and if that works out then the season and the season's not completed it will be the clubs that will have to reimburse that tv money and uh, there could be things that could happen where you ask the clubs to pay some money down to the lower leagues or or whatever. But it really depends in good faith of how BT and Sky would treat this. And uh, I think it would be a very difficult thing to do for them to not say that we want our money back. I mean, Sky, I mean, the deal, you know, last deal was £5.1 billion. So if you pro to that, that's a hell of a lot of money you're playing to the Premier League. So I think that the clubs have every right to, to have to reimburse that TV money because if you've been paid and you're not even going to be on TV and in the, in the season's down, then you have to give the money back. How this affects players' wages and everything, only God one knows. Because remember, when the club sign a player, they sign a player for the year. When they're on holiday, you still got to pay them. Yeah, but if you're having it to, all, it, all, it all depends on the contract language, right? The fine print, right? Yeah, if it's an act yeah. of God and there's an act of God, what does that mean in terms of who gets reimbursed, who gets compensated, who is insured and not insured? There's a lot of factors to be thought about. Mm. I have limited or no sympathy for Sky, BT, peer players, clubs, and the conversation. I'm worried about the person who works on Carnival Cruise Line or works around Cavi, all these in the industries where they're trying to have a paycheck to pay their mortgage or to pay their rent. I am less concerned about millionaires and billionaires and how they're going to figure it out. They'll figure it out. They make enough money. We pay yeah. into a pot that they all share. Yeah. I hope they save some money. 
because you know what? They sh they make enough to save. Some of people, course. as you said, yeah, it's ridiculous. Sixty two percent of individuals are living paycheck to paycheck. They are my concern, not billionaires and millionaires. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, true. So, guys, we're going to do a deal or no deal round uh, as we approach this. How do we end the season? Because that's really the the talk of where everything is going to hand right now. Uh, the the season has to end. We all know that. But we need to find out how we're going to get there. So we're just going to go a, a, a quick round and, and see. And, and the guys in the chat as well, I want to hear your thoughts as well. Would you deal or no deal on any of these options? So I'm just going to give you four options here. Some of them are very sensible and some of them are wacky as hell and <laughs> probably would never go for it. But let's start with the most sensible ones. Ebony is really struggling with her internet connection at the moment. Um, it's funny. Ebony, you've never struggled like this with your internet connection before. Is everything all right? I've never seen her struggle. Her internet connection is normally, maybe it's got the coronavirus as well. I mean, we don't know. <laughs> connection, hey, listen, I, everything. I have no idea what, I, I have no idea what's happening with Sky. <laughs> wow yeah i've never i've never seen your internet connection like this before so guys we're going to it's a deal or no deal yeah if and and, and you can elaborate maybe, as, maybe, Scott, maybe yeah and you can Scott elaborate as much as to talk. You, and you can elaborate as much as you like so so let's go with the first idea yeah how are we going to end this season yeah deal or no deal do we f completely finish the season out and play the rest of the games Bertram, deal or no deal? Say it again. Sorry, I missed would, that. Would you completely just finish out the season and let them play the remaining games, no matter how long it takes? Would you pull the trigger on that deal or no? No, deal? that's nonsensical. The calendar of fixtures year to year is so jam packed anyway. That that's not rational. And given that players also have a life and need some kind of holidays or vacation to recuperate after a difficult season, is it has been a difficult season? I don't see how you really can say that we should extend this into next year if this situation does resolve itself in next month. Damn. So, so no so, way. So you, you wow, and and everyone's agreeing with you. Eighteen is saying no deal. Kez is saying no deal on completing the season. <laughs> Poor Liverpool. <laughs> what does this mean for Liverpool fans? <laughs> And uh, Daniel is saying no deal as well. Wow. Okay. My word. No well, it means they're still Champions League champion. Wow. That's <laughs> they're still harsh, the reigning champion. <laughs> that's harsh. <laughs> Tony, would you finish the season out? Deal or no deal? Um. I'm gonna say deal because for me, I want to play. I want to see football. I want to see. I don't like the idea of Liverpool winning the league, but I hate the idea of there being a season. I'd rather finish the season and say, you know what, we start next season two, and we don't have the cup competitions. Mm. There's a way. Yeah, there is. So, but, but it all depends on when you start this season we're talking about. Yeah. The way yeah. things are, we think about people's lives. You cannot sacrifice lives for en enjoyment entertainment. So the question is, when is the time you're going to recommence the season? Is the virus still permeating the environment? Mm. And uh, so you can't have crowds, and it'd be irresponsible governments to allow crowds to congregate. Mm. So I'm not sure how you get to a point of a good time to say, okay, players have to go retrain again to get up to speed. It's it's a conundrum which I don't see an easy solution to. Yeah. So, uh, deal or no deal, Ebony, would you finish the season out? Will you take that deal, or will you say, "Nah, you know what? Let's cut it off." You know, you know, you know what? Unless there is a way that the the games can be played so that the, the season ends in May, and if it if it means, as you alluded to earlier, if it means having to play two or three games a week, it is going to burn some players out, but hey-ho, they're paid enough money to be fit, as fit as they can be to accommodate themselves to play as many games as, um, as possible a week. If it can be, if, it, if that can be done and players can stay fit and they don't fatigue too easily, then do it. Oh, Otherwise, so we've got, no deal. Oh, 
So we've got a no deal from Bertram, a deal from Tony, and uh, a no deal from Ebony. I am probably going to say a deal. I'll probably agree with Tony because, as I said to Bertram before, there's a way that you can do this by just completely cancelling the European games and you can just go in and play two to three games a week and catch up. And remember, guys, there's only nine games left. So you're talking about maybe something that can actually go on for three weeks. So you could essentially finish the season in three weeks if you played three games a week. You, you could do it. But that's if we come back. <laughs> that's, that's a big that's if, what, man. That, that's what I'm saying, though. You know, yeah. it's like if, if, if two or three games can be played a week and the players don't get fatigued, they don't get tired too quickly, then do it. Then end the season as normal. If European yeah. games are, if European games are in that mix, in that two to three games a week mix, fine, do it. Otherwise, no deal. So okay. I'm in between yes and no. Okay, so option two. O o option two, end it as it is. Guys in the chat, would you take that? Would you deal or no deal? Would you end it, close it down, and then... Oh my God! I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, it would just be complete pandemonium. Bertram, deal or no deal? Shut it down right now. Well, well my, I have been consistent. I think the season is finished. I think the season has ended. It just hasn't been realized yet. Communicated. Unless governments cross the to the contain, and I don't see where the UK has made the decision to do so. The virus is brilliant, as we all know. And be facetious, and therefore, if that's the case, he's not, if you saw Rooney's article that talks about, but not forgive them if something happened to his family. Well, for think about players playing, someone caught the virus and actually died, the league would never live that down, right? So there are things that the league has to think about, which is as reputational risk, which they have to address, not just economic risk. I don't see how you have the season continuing when we are all in limbo as to where we're going societally, going as sports team, going as sports league. We have no control. This is not Wuhan, where they have shut down the entire city for two weeks and then be able to contain it. We have not gone that way in the U.S. or in the U.K. Maybe in France they're doing it. Maybe in Italy yeah, they're doing France it. France has just we, announced a lockdown about half an hour ago. We're not, doing, we're not doing that here. So how can you then say we're going to start off in three, four weeks' time when we're in the infancy of this whole thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I so, so, so you, you say shut it down right now. Shut it. Close it. Finish it. Well, no, I say, I, I say it was, I say it was shut down. Leave it open as it is now. Reconvene in month's time. We're going to see how things progress. But by a certain date, you have to make a decision. Mm -hmm. So is that date April? Is that date May? Is that date June? By some point, you have to have a cutoff time, which is say, you know, what? it's the drop dead date, and you work backwards from there to where we are now. Right, so 18 is saying deal. He'll take that deal, shut it down now. Kez, Kez is saying, I say no deal based on what we don't know. And again, that's probably con the consensus throughout all of us. We really don't know. But one thing that we probably do know, Kez, is because the UK ha is not in lockdown, one thing we can guarantee is it's going to get worse. I mean, we went from one death, two death, three death, four death, five death, six death, the seventh and eighth death happened on the same day. And when we got to 10, it was like 21 deaths the next day, which was double. And then today is now 35 deaths, which is 14. So we've gone from having one death a day to two deaths a day to 10 deaths a day and now 14 deaths a day. Uh, would the, look, it doesn't, the prognosis doesn't look good for the next seven days or the next 14 days. It, it is going to get bad. Yeah. And there's, there's not me being negative as you, you, anyone who knows me personally knows I'm a positive guy. I'm glass, glass half full. Yeah. I'm sunny side up as they say. Yeah. So for me to say something like that, I'm just being real guys. I'm just looking at what's going around in the world right now. And I'm seeing it play out exactly to that response where the fact that we ain't even in lockdown mode yet, we're, we're telling everybody to go out. And, and, and this thing is still happening. The worst is yet to come. So listen, um, Jal is Jal say, Jal saying, being in a situation that Arsenal are in, especially with contracts running down, yeah, I wonder how that will even affect that. I mean, and the one thing I, I do want to talk about there is, not happy with Arsenal as far as these contracts running down st stuff goes, because we're talking about Gwendozi, Saka, we're talking about 
Lacazette was offered, supposedly offered a deal. Abamian's offered, been offered two deals. When this new office took over, didn't they say that they won't allow players to run down to their last year contracts anymore? Yep. So, 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 they, they, but, they, but, 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 but think about it this way: the league, the team has no control over that situation. Exactly. And people seem to be confused about this. I, I have a contract. I'm a player with Bamian. I can be a free agent in the market and maybe make twice what you're going to pay me. Sanchez is the perfect. Sanchez is the barometer and the example of how you should manage a contract. You know, take a risk. You may get injured. At the same time, you can double your wage mm. as a free agent. So why not would I sign a contract? I could yeah. probably buy some insur expensive insurance to protect me. So why would I sign a contract? And the other so thing, they, the they, yeah. now go on, finish, finish off. No, I say, I say, I don't understand this rationale about people saying, well, the clubs don't want to sign. The clubs are not being doing this. The players are the one now managing the situation, making decisions about, are we going to be in the Champions League? I mean, like I said, am I going to be playing full time? If I'm Bamiyang, will I ever win a trophy? If I'm Guendouzi, I'm going to get along with Arteta. Why would I sign? If I'm Saka, mm. I'm not taking 30000 when Utsuna Doi is making one fifty, and you tell me I'm the greatest thing to slice bread. That makes no sense to me. Yeah, because... I, I'm not taking $30,000. If I was making 3000 I'm not taking thirty. Give me 100000 I mean, when I increase it next year, it depends on my production. Yeah, so it's a player's market. It's a difficult situation, but I don't see it. Yeah, it's a player's market. And, and I think this thing is only going to be more evident in terms of where you want to play. The one thing that really annoyed me about the Abamian situation was I would understand if you're going Barcelona. I would even understand if you're going Real Madrid or Bayern. <laughs> but Inter Milan? How are you going to leave Arsenal and go to Inter Milan? What, what that, that That is... I, I don't get that. That is something that I just don't understand at all. Anyway, let's get back to the well, topic well, at hand. Top well, part of one thing is that we're offering probably about, I would think about 300. Mm. If Inter's going to pay him half a million a week, they're in the Champions League. And, 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 really, that, and that it, means that it won't yeah. be about success. It would just be about money. Because remember, he's 31 next season. That would be his last contract. If they're going to pay him four or 500 million euros or, or 100,000 euros, he'll take that because Abamian. Although he's on 200 grand a week now, he's not in the upper echelon of earnings for a player, but yet he's one of the top goal scorers in the world. So, yeah, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if he just took a huge payday and said, and, and that's me, I'm done. Sign a free four-year deal, guarantee me that money, and then he's done. Tony, would you end the football season as it is now, deal or no deal? No deal. No deal. No, sir. Um, you guys have pretty much done it, done it, done it to death. I can't say anything different that that has already not been said. But simple, the, 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 you can't finish the league today for me with too many with all these intangibles. Um, and as far as contracts are concerned, the contract is signed from one date to another date. What happens in the middle is in July or the 28th of September or whatever the date your contract is, that's it. End of. I'm walking or I'm staying. We can negotiate while we've got time and see what we can do. You know my feelings. We throw the kitchen sink to keep a Bamiyang. We ship everybody else and we put together pieces around him, incoming pieces, young pieces, and we make it work for next season for Arteta with a team of people he knows will deliver for him on the pitch. Excellent, excellent. And uh, um, Ebony, deal or no deal? Should we end the season as it is? Right. Right. Only end it, as I said before, I'm going to give the same answer, only end it if there is absolutely no way that three or two, two or three games a week cannot be played. OK, because there are nine games left of the season. Quite sure how you can't fit nine games in between the third or the fourth of April and the end of the season. And the, and the season ends when? Early May? Because of the Euros. So I can't really see how nine games can't be fitted within that, that, that month period. It, it's, it's doable. And that includes the European games as well. It's just that the players need to be, keep Tip top shape and fit in order to in order to accommodate those games. So yeah, no deal. 
and and they're quarantined. They're in their homes. Some of them have got gym gym accessories in their homes and whatever, and are definitely yeah. doing as much as they can to keep fit. Uh, for me, I would say. Um, I would say no deal because again, like Tony said, there's still a chance. And and actually, like most of you have said, there's still a chance of us to finish the season as it is. Um, nine games left, that's a possible 27 points, although uh Liverpool's lead is 20 25. Um, there's a possible 27 points. I'm not saying that they're gonna literally lose all the rest of their games, but at the same time. Again, we've got to think about everybody. We've got to think about consistency. And the smaller teams will not agree to this. And I can see one of the smaller teams or two taking the FA to court. If if they shut everything down now and a team was getting to get relegated, that will go to court. That would be a nasty, long, ugly court case. And, and I and wouldn't would, blame them. Yeah, no, no would I. Them. Yeah, no, yeah. no would I. For the same thing that Tony said, there's a date of a contract for the beginning and the start of a season, and I, I wouldn't expect them to shut it down. Right, you guys... If you, sh if you, sh if you shut it down now, then it means that... The, the, who, who's in the bottom? <clears throat> Bournemouth, Norwich, no, Norwich, and Aston Villa? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so those nine points is, is a difference between... Or those nine games is a difference between <clears throat> them staying up or going down. Yeah, that's play right. The, and... Play the nine games. There's, every, there's space. That There's room. There is room. I know some people are like, oh, well, you know, end it and blah de blah and And like I said, you know, don't, don't, let's, let's not force players into playing those games if they're ill. All right. If, if they're too ill to play, then fine, end it. But if they're fit enough and there is, and, and this whole um, pandemic blows over, it's not going to blow over quick, but you know how people are in this country. It's, mm. it's, it, you, you give them warnings and they're just like, step over them and just and just pretend they didn't hear them so, so but if, if, if they're able to play those games if they're able to play those nine games play them out so guys option three liverpool fans ain't gonna like this they're not gonna like it david roberts i'm talking to you vince's brother who's in australia you ain't gonna like it bro listen <laughs> void the season shut sh sh shut it down and just pretend it didn't exist Liverpool don't win the title and they start all over again. And that and that will be as fair as fair can be because that way no one gets relegated, no one wins any titles. This is also a mad thing right now. And already in the chat, look, 18 is saying void it. I, I know he don't like Liverpool anyway. Look, I know I think I think Kez has said something here. Kez is saying season is null and void for me because. With 28, 29 games played, there are so many permanations, yep. Plus, if you can't confirm relegation <coughs> promotion, you can't just award Liverpool the title either. And you know what? As crazy as it sounds, some people are going with that. But let me hear what you lot are going with. Bertram, void the so, season. So I, I'll say this. I was supposed to attend what I call the best sporting event on the planet in two weeks' time, the Jamaica High School Champion, Track and Field Championship. Best event I've ever been to. And I've been to the Olympics in 2012. I've been to NFL game football game. They just voided the event. It's a four-day event. These athletes were at work last time. They basically shut it down. Because they don't want to get contaminated. They want to have zero implications. To that. Even though we have hundreds of U.S. coaches go there and hundreds of athletes who leave from there come to the U.S. to run track and field, they shut it down. There's a reason for that. They have been strategic. I've been emphasized they've been thoughtful. They want to make sure they protect their citizens. I don't see how you continue a season unless we can get to a point where we're saying we're comfortable that the virus has been stymied and we're comfortable that the infection rate is being reduced significantly and it's minuscule. How do you then restart the season when you have, to, and it's going to play behind closed doors. And even then players can infect players that we saw with Utah, which I think will have to Donovan Mitchell and Gobert. Mm. It's very difficult then to say, I'm going to restart a season when I see them run risk to players mm. and God forbid something happens to someone, how do you explain that when the general consensus is avoid crowds, avoid people who may be infected? Yeah. So I, I, avoid I, is a very strong word, yeah. Um, but I don't think you can continue the season. I think it, it, it would be the, the amount of players that are in the league versus the population of, of, of the UK is very minute. And all it would take is for the 
medical team of each football team to go in and test all of their players. It would be, right, everybody has to report at 8 o'clock, 8 a.m. on Thursday morning for testing. And remember, that's after this incubation period. Everybody's quarantined at the moment. Everyone's been told to, to and that's not us as workers, but but the players uh, uh, on football teams have been told to self-isolate. So we know that they are self-isolated at, at the moment. By not this Thursday, but if the Thursday after, everybody was to report to the um, for the training camps to be tested for the virus, and they were in the clear. I believe that we might start to see games come back behind closed doors with no fan uh, participation whatsoever, just so that they can uh, finish the league. It, it will happen. I mean, that's the smartest way around it. The 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 other way is obviously to just not do it. But but I mean, void in the season that would be a nasty thing. But it's possible they can do it. Tony, deal or no deal? Why? Well, just, just one thing before you go to Tony. Actually, yeah. is. I agree that if you can quarantine the players, the staff that may support the players, the referees in a, in some quarantine environment for a certain period of time when the virus may have passed and they stay in that environment for the duration of the rest of the season and also include media personnel who have to broadcast the game, then that's possible, yeah, right? Yeah. You can actually see that piece of it happening, but that becomes challenging also. Yeah, it's a very challenging thing to do. Tony, void season. Liverpool don't win the title. <laughs> Everybody goes home. Nobody lose. Nobody get hurt. <laughs> would you? Would you take it? Deal or no deal? No deal. No deal. So again, I just keep saying it. Try your utmost to finish the season. If there's a, if there's a logistical way of completing the season, you finish it. As if it impacts other competitions. You finish it. It just, you know, it, it just leaves a sour taste when you avoid the season. You've you've made all that effort. From, you know, I hate Liverpool. It just, nothing will give me more pleasure than to know they didn't win the season. However, there's a sour taste for uh, for an unfinished season and unfinished competition. Excellent, excellent. Ebony, would you void the season? Would you wipe it out now? Everybody go home. Look after your families. Don't worry about football anymore. Don't think about football. Don't talk about football. And let's come back in August when the season comes back again. You can't just void the season like that, man. Come on. I mean, listen, I'm not Liverpool's biggest fan either, but Liverpool fans are going to be screwing because it is, this is their... This is their the first premiership title in 30 years. I was 15, almost 15 when they when they last won the title. Okay, so that, that that just shows how old I am. But the fact of the matter is, you know, you, if you're gonna if you're gonna avoid the season, then does that mean that the likes of whoever's in the bottom three are they gonna escape the season? And also, if you avoid yeah. the season, what about what about the two teams? That that reach that are at the summit of the championship, are that's they going to come up? Yeah, and so, so we so, could be we could be talking so, about so, another court case that's going to escalate for years and years and years. And but years. but the thing but the thing is so that those two whoever's at the top, I, I believe Leeds and some I can't remember who else, but I know I think Leeds are up there. Mm. Now, the fact that they've worked so hard to get to get back into the Premiership for the past what ten years, 10, 12 mm. years, so now. They've got an opportunity and you're saying to them, well, we're going to avoid the season. And that means the championship too and all the other leagues below. So let's just start again. It's like, what? No, yeah. come on. I mean, it I mean, I'm, I'm going to give the three of you a very uncomfortable situation here where it could, I, I've only put that option down because I've kind of foreseen every kind of uh, denominator that there is in regards to what would happen. And, the only reason why I put down Void the Season is for one reason, and, and it's not a very nice reason to talk about, and that was if a footballer had died, if the coronavirus had caused the death of a footballer. That's the only reason why I put it down, and, and I definitely think that that would be something they might look at if it happens. But yeah, initially, you know what, we'll come to that road if it happens. God forbid, I hope it doesn't. But but we don't know. The truth is, we, we I couldn't have told you that Mikel Arteta was going to catch it. <laughs> you and know, I, 
Yeah, I, could, I yeah. couldn't have told you that a six-year-old boy with asthma was going to die. I couldn't have told you that a brand, a, a brand newborn was going to get the coronavirus. I couldn't have told you any of these things. So anything can happen, guys. Anything can happen. I, I'm with Tony on this. Tony's Tony's my um, my knight in shining armor today because he's providing all the answers that I am. So I'm, I'm going with Tony on that. I, I wouldn't do it as long as there's as long as there's the the dates are viable to finish the season. I would keep it open regardless. But uh, people have to understand well. that they're going to be exposure, right? So we say self-contained individuals or contained individuals who may have exposure. You have to get to your destination. You have to deal with the, the pilot and the bus driver. Get it with hotel staff. Get it be there's a lot of permutations other than I'm just going to quarantine these players. They're going to get exposures. So trying to contain all of that and have them play games is going to be very, very challenging. So and it's Bert not just Bertram. I quarantine the players. Yeah. So Bertram, this is the, the most <laughs> stupidest idea I came up with. And I thought I would throw it out there because um, let, let my mind let my mind go. Uh, I That's it. Goffy. I heard Goffy talking about this on TalkSport. And I don't like them fools from TalkSport. But today, I tuned into TalkSport because I never do. I don't listen to the programme because they're so anti-Arsenal and I don't like their narrative. Also, the way they were trying to dog mm. off Robbie from AFTV, I didn't like that at all. So I make it a personal thing to not listen to TalkSport. But I thought I'd tune in today because there's no football and we're all talking crap as it is anyway. And they were talking about doubling up this season to next season. Oh my God! For, 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 let me explain at the, the, how that would work. That would mean that you take the points from this season and you add them to next season. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Liverpool start off. No, no lie, no lie. And I and actually, in fairness to Goffey, one of uh, one of the members of the FA said to him that this was an option. So while it, it sounds stupid that I put it down there, we have to talk about it because it's an option. So. The start of next season, so everything shuts down. We then start next season with the same points that we have stopped this season with. So Liverpool start. <laughs> My God, Arsenal's never going to make the Champions League. And Liverpool start with a 25-point lead. Um, Bertram, Bertram ain't even smiling. Look, Bertram's not looking forward to this at all. He's not even smiling. Bertram, and, and guys in the chat, will you deal or no deal on this? Look, 18 is saying yes, yes, yes. <laughs> 18 doesn't know where we are in the league. <laughs> We're in 10th position. <laughs> man, man. We're man. in 10th position, 18. Hey, listen, look, well, I, well, I welcome I, Alex as well. Alex, is a little bit of a slow day today. Everybody in the fan base knows there's no football to talk about. So we're just making up some crazy stuff as we go along. So it's good. Nice of you to join us, mate. And um, Alex says, we respect all opinions. I heard what you're saying, but the health of humans will all come, come first. Yeah, unfortunately, Alex, the FA and the and the government are not putting humans first. And and actually, the FA, I'll give them a little bit of a bly because when Boris said he's bullshit last Thursday, the FA, and not just the FA, everyone in London, yeah? And Friday the 13th was like ghost town in London. That, that was a day after Boris said, everybody, come, we're not locking it down. Go back to work. Go and spend your money. Go. Everyone was like, yeah, really? I'm, I'm self-isolated, mate. I'm staying at home. I'm shutting yeah, this yeah, because down. Yeah, pe because people aren't, people aren't stupid enough to yeah, listen to um, idiot stupid. Boris. They, they might have been stupid enough to vote for him, but they're definitely not stupid enough to go and die, go out there and die for him. That's for sure. Bertram, let me, you're waiting to answer this question. So will you <clears> double up? <throat> Guys in the chat, let me hear... Your verdict. Will you double up this season and next season? This is some crazy ass. Go on, Bertram. So this up. is what happens when your main thing that you're in business for have no content. And you come up with crazy ideas to keep your audience. And you give them this situation they should ponder and consider. And then they can all have their input. Doubling up 2021. So why don't we go back to 2019 or 2018? When do you stop? When do, you, when do you consider what is an average that makes a lot of sense? We didn't finish the 2020 season, so how are you going to start and have an average in 2021? Because team could have finished in any place, unless you're going to finish 2020 and then do 2021, which still makes no sense to me. So I am not a proponent. I wouldn't even consider it. To me, it's not an option. And I'm very surprised <laughs> the FA has even considered and contemplated that to be an option. Because I can't see how it's a viable option. No, it's... I want to use the word I'm thinking, but no. 
Heck no. All right, listen. Yeah, 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 boy. Your boy said, nah, Clark, nah, nah, something remarks on Boris. Listen, I'm going to lick up Boris today, man. You just wait till we start getting into the corona thing. I'm going to lick his ass now, man. You wait until he, he, he comes up. And uh, Alex is saying, unfortunately, I work in a school, just like Tony. Um, they're saying we do have to work until we hear from the government's guidelines to change it. It's madness. Yeah, same thing Tony said. Tony, you got the conch, man. Um, yeah. People keep telling me where I get you got the conch. Have you never read Lord of the Flies, everybody? Come on, what's going on here, man? Um, Tony, <laughs> would, you, would, would you would you would you would you would you double up? Oh my God, double up! Look, yeah, guys, listen. Me, Bertram, and Tony follow the NFL. I've seen some crazy shit, man. I've seen. <laughs> listen, in the strike season, when when the Redskins, my team, won the uh, the when the Super Bowl in '87. And they had to get the replacements out. And so we see some mad things going on in the NFL. Tony, Tony, talk to me. Would you double up? It, it, it's the mind. It boggles the mind, <laughs> really seriously. Um, I've, I've heard some stuff in my time. I really have. I don't even know what to think. I'm really <laughs> conflicted between <laughs> it's as Bertram says, have you seen where we're at, where we are? I was like, why would you want us to do that? Why would you? As, uh, okay, I, 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 I just want to give an option here. Um, I, I just want to give an option. You know, if you void, no. if you void the season, yeah, and if you void it and say Liverpool are not champions, we're closing it down, everybody. Um, enjoy the spring and hope everybody gets well and let's come back in August to start the season again. And essentially they would be given uh, April, May, June, July. So they'll be given it five months to blow over. That's fair enough. That's that's a good call. What you're doing though is you're not punishing Liverpool for not finishing the season or not winning the, the title. You're saying to them, you've got a 25-point lead to go and do it again. Yeah, that's what they're essentially saying. Um, how that affects, I don't know what they would do. Could you imagine if you was a player and you're in the last year of your contract or you're someone like Salah or Sane or Firmino and you get a massive contract offer from uh, Real Madrid or Barcelona and you, you, you and you leave in the summer and then it, the, the, the second part, part two of the season starts and you, you've lost half <laughs> your players. I mean, it's just hilarious. I don't even want to think so, about So, so part of one question, so are they champions for the 2019 to 2021 season? No, because it's void. What are they what champions you, for? You, 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 you're, you're, you're carrying it over, aren't you? So there are no champions. Yeah, but I'm saying, are you champions for 2019 to 2021? What are you champions for? What period are your champions? It would be for the, it would be for the two years, wouldn't it? It would be a double up. It would be for the two years. <laughs> <laughs> Ebony can't stop laughing. This is, this is some mad thing. Anyway, that listen. Um, that was a really fun session. That was a fun session, guys. And 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 what it does is it just it lets you know how hard this is for the FA. Let's remember UEFA are meeting on Tuesday, and that would be to close off the Champions League and the Europa. I don't know what they're going to do. I, I, I think the best situation right now is to hold fort and, and revisit it in seven days just to see how bad this thing's going to get. I don't know why they're, they're meeting on Tuesday. I don't know what the specifics are. Maybe they've already made up their own mind. And uh, maybe they're just going to say, look, Champions League is dead. Uh, Europa Cup is dead. Maybe they're going to say that because I think in hindsight, guys, your domestic league is more important than the European leagues because there's so much more teams that are into it. Yeah, When you talk about Europe, there's only a very few amount of teams that are playing in Europe. So maybe UEFA might say, look, we're going to shut it down and then let everybody focus on their domestic leagues instead because that is the priority. That's the one where you've already played 30 games and we need to have a definitive answer of, of, of how we finish up. Maybe that's the case. But listen... Well, it, it gives us something else to talk about next Sunday. But guys, can, listen, can I? Can I ask, yeah, go on, go on. Now, I, I was going to actually answer uh, the doubling up, <laughs> um, and the answer is hell no. You know, <laughs> for, for, for the fact that and, Liverpool, if Liverpool had look, Liverpool have got what eighty-two points, so they'll start off the season, but the set part two with eighty-two points. <clears throat> Like, to even give them back that satisfaction, oh, we've got 82 points. Nah, come on. If yeah. you're going to avoid the season, avoid it properly. And start, and, and if you're going to avoid 20, 2019, 2020, 
forget that it didn't happen. Let's see if that's what you're going to do. Start 2020, 2021 as, right. as, as completely something separate. But for, no and, doubling up. Sorry, and for no. you guys who didn't understand that New Orleans hail no, that was a H-A-I-L and that was a N-A-W. Yeah? That was a <laughs> hail no. Or a hail to the no. Yeah? So listen, guys. Hail no. Let's Hell talk about nah. what players do we offer contracts to in the summer. So this is a big thing right now. We come off the back of, uh, we. I talked about this in one of my videos last week, um, and it was uh, Danny, Sabalo, Danny Ceballos. Uh, we know that the clause in his contract is 39 million euros, and he definitely seems to be a part of Arteta's plan. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, and, and I, we've talked before about how Arteta has watched them play coming up through the under-21s. I definitely think that they want to, to, to hear about it. There's rumours now, and, and I can't say anything because I haven't spoken to any agents this week, so I don't really know whether these are true or not. But there's rumours now that Arsenal are ready to pull the trigger on a £36 million uh, deal this summer to bring him to the Emirates on a permanent deal. Remember, guys, he's 24 years old. Um, but let's talk about the guys, as well as Ceballos. Um, we've got Pier, we've got Abamian, we've got Ozil. We've got Saka, we've got Socrates, Louise, and Mustafi who are all going into a final year's contract. So out of those guys, which ones would you offer a new contract to? Uh, I'll, I'll start with Bertrand. But, so this is Ceballos, would you offer him a deal? Abamian, Ozil, Saka, Socrates, Louise, and Mustafi. Which one will you bring back? Bertrand, you go first. I would probably give Ozil a 10-year contract. To go away. Listen, guys, who would you bring back? Um, so I would bring back Saka, obviously, and try to match his demands. I would probably take Sabias. I think he has a lot to offer. Definitely Obama Yang. I would not offer David Luiz another contract. Um, because I think David, he knows he's been a useful servant in his first year. I don't see him being a long-term solution, especially since we have um, other players coming in. I would not offer Socrates another contract. Even though I like how Mustafi is playing, I would not offer Mustafi a contract. So those players to me, and they obviously are all defenders so far, it's time for them to go find other pastors to perform their craft and allow us to bring in. Now we have Chambers, we have Holding, but a number of players Mara Panos, who is also actually known out. We have a number of players out there mm -hmm. we need to bring back into the organization, get them ready on the art tutelage to sort of help us. We also probably need to buy one or two more central defenders and another right back. But I can see us offering those more mature seasoned veterans contracts, especially since they have not been stellar performance. I don't see yeah. it. And, and, and it's fair to say, look, we live in a market now where buying a player is going to cost you the house. And we, we live in a time now where football managers and owners know they have to develop their younger players, A, and B, know that they have their scouting team has to do a tremendous, remarkable job. Thankfully, we've got our eye on the, 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 the hidden prize. The hidden prize in football is said to be South, South America. And, and, and Edu has got his eye in the sky there. So it's a really good sign that we have somebody, so we have a presence uh, looking at that market because the European market is very transparent. We know who's good. I mean, look at the uh, headline from uh, Dortmund. He's, he's lighting it up. Look at Martinelli from, uh, from Arsenal. He's lighting it up. It's, these alarm bells have, uh, uh, have gone straight through to the Barcelonas, the Real Madrids and these big teams. Who will just throw the book at you? You know, with, if they offered Arsenal 100 million for Martinelli, they would take it. Why? Because they took it with Anelka. When Anelka went for big money, they didn't even breathe on that. They just was like, yeah, all right, let's take the money and go. Obviously, we were going into yeah. a recession. The training centre, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, but we, I we, do we, think the Real Madrid yeah, and they bought are hoarding South American talent. If you look at Real Madrid, the last three players they have bought, mm. who are deemed to be exceptional from Brazil, they've been hoarding those talent, right? They buy them for less than 50 mil, and they'll probably keep them or sell them for astronomical figures. So, so Tony, let's move off to, over to you. First of all, Ceballos, 
Will you pull the trigger on that? And then run down Abamian, Ozil, Saka, Socrates, Luis, Mustafi. Which one of those would you offer? All, all, are, all are in the final year of their contract. Which ones would you offer? And before we go to you, yeah. who, who is, uh, uh, 18 has said Saka and Uber is the only one that he would take back. And uh, and your boy and Alex are really going in the chat at the moment. All right, so go on. Tony, who would you bring back? Whew, okay, so Ceballos is clearly one of the best midfielders currently in our team, which is a, a glaring of the state of our midfield right, right now. We mm. simply do not have quality in midfield. Um, Xhaka, uh, Torreira off and on, Guendouzi, He's the future, but we can't rely on him consistently. Um, and, and that's it. We literally don't have any other options. Uh, Emil Smith role to come back. But again, we're not sure on uh, how good is he? Be? Is he going to be the new or is he going to be the new Jack Wilshire? So um, right now, I pull the plug and I say, yeah, let's go and get ourselves in. I bring back Mkhitaryan into the fold, like I said last week. I bring him back because he's an option, which I think it'd be a useful asset because he can play the 10. Um, mm -hmm. Then I move on to the next years. You know my feelings on Obama Yang. You throw the kitchen sink to keep him. And then everybody else, uh, sorry, and Saka, that's an easy stay. That's an easy stay. If you don't do that, if you don't do the deal with Saka, you're an idiot. Um, but everybody else can go. Ozil can go. Socrates can go. Luis can go. Mustafi can go. Because we're going to have Saliba, um, Soares, Chambers, Holding, Umpicano. That's six. Centre backs potentially, yeah, and the tank. Don't forget side Kolasinac, the tank, yeah? yeah. So we've got plenty of defensive cover. I'm not saying it's gonna be the be all and end all. I still think Mari's gonna be the one. Um, I think he's gonna be the senior figure, and I think Saliba's gonna be his number two, just like a Rafael Varane standing next to Ramos. Um. But yeah, let everybody go. Everybody else can go. Excellent. Get the money in. Keep Obama Yang. Yeah, because they're gonna even if it's Trump change, they're still gonna get a little bit of money in for those players. Ebony, which ones of those players would you keep? Uh, it seems to be a consistent three where everyone's saying Saka, Abamian, and Ceballos. Um, is there anything from you outside of that? Because uh, Louise Mustafi. Okay. Okay, um, well, those three that you've mentioned, or uh, Abamyang, Saka, and um, Sabayos, they're easy. They're, they're easy stays. I mean, if you let them go, then we have issues. Mm. Um, as far as Mustafi goes, he can go. Yes, he's been playing well. Yes, he's improved under Arteta, but he's not consistent. He's not. He's not the answer defensively that we're looking for. Mm. Louise, another player. That's that's. Improved under Arteta, I like Louise. but he's also not. The, I, I I like Louise, but he's a bit random for me at times, and he has very costly mistakes in him, mm. as we've seen this season. But well, so he, hasn't, he hasn't. He made can any, go, or he he, if, if if you're going to keep him, he hasn't made any under Arteta yet. He's been Arteta's most consistent players. I went to a, a, a Mark Sporting uh, website yeah. to do the average of each game, and his his figures come up the highest. Since uh, Arteta took over, he's yeah. st statistically he's our most uh, consistent player at the moment, David Luiz, and he's leading. We saw what he did with Pablo Mari in he the does. last game. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. I mean, he does lead by example, but as I said, you know, he, I don't want him to make any mistakes under Arteta, but he, there is a potential there, and some, and w when a defender makes a mistake, it's costly. So, but he, if you're going to keep him. Keep him as a keep him as an op, uh, an option to bring him on. Um, mm. Mustafi, as I said, can go. Um, as far as I'm concerned, uh, Stockett is. I don't know where, I don't know where his head's at at times. Uh, he's another one that can make mistakes or just dawdle on the ball. 
he, he's not even a ball. He's not even a baller. I mean, like he's a defender, but he does. I don't think he likes the ball. So he can go. Xhaka can go. Um, Xhaka, you know, from time to time he'll he'll revert back to his old self again. So, um, but as far as holdings concerned, he can stay. Callum Chambers, when he's back, he can stay. Um, I know we haven't. I know we've not mentioned Bellerin, but you know he can stay as well. Emil, Emil uh, Smith Rowe, he can come back. Um, then we've got Mari. Then we've got um, 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 the one who, who the defender who's in France. Mm -hmm. um, Saliba. You know he Saliba. Mm -hmm. We've Saliba. got him to come through. So yeah. So 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 we've got those to come through if we're looking for defensive players. Um, but um, but as for the Louise's, yeah, he can stay. He can be a, a bench option. But Xhaka, uh, Mustafi, Socrates, he can go. They yeah, can because go. because because let's be clear, this is not Arteta's team. This is not the team that Arteta has envisioned for success. He knows who he needs out there. And getting rid of as much players as possible is the key for him. But I would like to see David Luiz stick around as well, as well as the top three that everybody said. I really like what I see from Luiz. And I, I like the leadership as well. There's something that we've been lacking. He hasn't shown those qualities yet at the time. Abamian, is he a leader? No. Um, <coughs> I, think that, I think the armband yeah. probably is only with him to stop him from leaving, to be honest. By all accounts... Louise is yeah, but the, then how many captains? How many how many captains have we had and they've left? Yeah, and then and they weren't real captains, were they? That that was just a plea to get them to to not go, and they ended up going anyway. So that's not a really good sign for Abamian. That's not a good sign at all. But for me, I, I I would go with those four players. I would I would I would offer Saka and Abamian and and separate those two because those two for them it would be about money. Uh, one is at the end of his career, and the other's at the beginning. And you would have to have offer them both a massively lucrative deal. And all that does is affect our budget for the summer. That's all it does. Don't look for us to go out and spend in silly money in the summer when we're having to facilitate those type of contracts. If we sell Ozil, that will cushion the blow. Yeah, if we sell Ozil, that would definitely cushion the blow. Alex is saying, uh, yes, he is. But he has to toe the PR line. If he loves London, and he loves London, a Bamian, he loves, he absolutely loves London. I think it's just about money that I really do. Oh, yeah. I think the two contracts they've offered them, from what I am hearing, the, the highest is two hundred and fifty grand a week. I, I think he wants up at three hundred. I really do. I think it's about money with a Bamian. I think if you offer him, if you put it on the table, he'll sign it. I really do. So, guys, um, anybody else want to close off anything about football? Because we're about to shut football down at the moment now and just focus on this corona thing. Anybody else want to say anything about the football inside of it? Bertram? I, I, I would say down. corona has taken over football, so we might as well go to corona because football is done for the time being. This I is the corona season. The little That's viruses are big. The little viruses have presence. Presents, man, for the viruses. I hear you. So, guys, we're going to talk about the corona. So, guys in the chat, we're going to be, this is all coronavirus. So, if you don't want to hear about it or you're tired of hearing it, because every time you switch on the TV, that's all you hear. Yeah, well, we're going to talk about it here. But what we're going to try and do as well is um, to try and give each other some advice as well. I think that's the best thing. We're all experts in different fields. And I think it's it would be good for us to talk about... Uh, um, other things. I just want to close out here. Alex is saying now, Apollo, it's about trophies. He hasn't won uh, time in Italy or Germany, and that's about uh, Aubameyang. I, I'm not sure, you know, look, when Suarez got injured and Barcelona was knocking the door for his replacement, he had the chance to, to go then. I know his brother was talking it up a little bit, but uh, we have to see what happens, man. We really don't know where his heart is at the moment. And as I said to you guys last week, if he wanted to sign away, I wouldn't even give him the luxury. I would let him play his last year and let him go on a free because when he's 32 in 2021, he ain't worth none. Yeah. And, and and that's what I would do. I, I would I would force him to stay here, which is what we should have done with Van Persie. So, guys, listen. So where are we with the coronavirus now? As a country, uh, 70 uh, people over 70 have been asked to self-isolate for an extended period. But this is coming off the back of nearly 47 countries have asked, have implied some kind of lockdown or ban. 
Today, Austria had banned gatherings of five people or more. Australia has ordered a 14-day quarantine for all new arrivals. So imagine that, guys. If you've got two weeks holiday and you want to go to Australia, well, guess what? Their quarantine period is 14 days. So you'd be spending all your holiday time locked in a room doing nothing. Yeah, that's Australia. Boy, I'm not even going to say nothing because i got plenty of Australian <laughs> fans who are on 101. But yeah, you guys figure it out. Germany, though, uh, <laughs> border entries, and this is today's news, guys. Germany now, uh, border entries from uh, with France, Switzerland, and Austria, it's mounting up. It's mounting up. So all these countries are on lockdown. And what does Boris Johnson do? Tells everybody Nothing. to go out, go out and play. Um, this chaos in the airports, especially uh, in the US airports and European. I spoke to, I was in a restaurant last night. I spoke to the owner there. Big shout out to to um, the, the the owners down there in Finchley uh, in Taste. And uh, they were saying that when they came back from Spain, it was pandemonium, but they weren't even being checked. They were they were asked, do you have a fever? And they said, no. And he goes, you can go on then. I mean, what happened to all the screenings and everything? It's, it's, it's madness. But uh, I do want to say that, uh, you know, right now there are tens of millions. Apparently the number is 120 million people living in lockdown as we speak. And the only thing that we know that's working is in China, they've got this radical system of confinement as they have in Italy right now, and the numbers are going down. So that, that's as far as that goes. Bertram, uh, before we go into all of the specifics, what's your thought on the coronavirus so far? Well, as I said at the outset, I do think the world does not approach this in a very coordinated, um, cohesive way to address threat to people's lives. It's global. It may not have permeated Africa or South America as yet, or certainly as the Caribbean. But frankly, the speed, the volume of infections that we're seeing, and how exponentially this virus is spreading, it doesn't make sense to me unless there's a coordinated effort that we're going to really be able to corral this virus in a meaningful way in a short period of time to allow people to go back to normal. Um, it's very discouraging, actually, because um, I, I chastise people, some people around me to say, in New York, for example, I know Bellasio has good intention on how we should address the virus and want to keep public schools open for different reasons. But if you want to address something meaningful, you and I keep emphasizing this about people in their lives in general, have a plan, be strategic, think through all the permutations, things that may happen, and then execute the plan. Don't go piecemeal trying to address it. Don't try to... Don't try to kill an elephant with an ant, frankly, so I sort of think about it, because the virus to me is like an elephant, and you're trying to use an ant to do it. Think about how you can find ways to corral this, and we have not done so globally, nor within different countries. We see China actually probably did the best job. Now, it's very difficult to compare societies, one where you have a communistic society where individuals don't have this of their freedoms, and they have cameras everywhere, so you can actually contain it, so you have the tools. Versus, for example, here in the US where it's individualistic, it's capitalistic, economics and the dollar drives everything that we do, even at the expense of lives. And I understand that, but I think there needs to be a much more coordinated strategy across the globe to address this. Yeah, and I, I think I think the, shut down the globe. I think the US is probably the I, I think the US is it, it probably in the worst position than than the UK. Um I think that Yeah and part of that is the whole federal state way of operating. Now yeah. the federal government come in and say you know, and, and here's another thing too, which is I heard the Jamaica Prime Minister give a State of Union address on, on COVID-19 when it first, they first had it first, before they had the first case actually. And I heard Boris give his address and I heard our president give his address. And if you were from an alien planet, you would think that the leader of the free world would have been the Jamaica Prime Minister, how cohesive, coordinated, how well thought out, articulate he was in trying to explain to the Jamaican population what strategy they were employing how they should consider this, what measures they should take to address this virus. We don't hear that from our president. We don't hear that from your prime minister, two of the several yeah. leading countries in the world. So it's, it's disappointing. Yeah, it's and, disappointing. I th and I think I'll, I'll talk about Boris first. And and Boris uh, has, has probably won up to, than Trump because he's listened to the advice of the scientists. And uh, some of the scientists are EU leading um, so that's the reason why a lot of people in the UK, like I understand it, I, I get where they're coming from. Um, a lot of companies have locked everything down in fear. And what the scientists in the UK have done, have taken a very ballsy 
uh, uh, attitude in terms of we need to get everybody fully f to the point of full immunity. And the only way to do that is to infect the population as much as possible because they are looking at down the road. Their information and scientific information tells them that there's going to be a more deadlier strain down the road. And we need to be ready for that strain. And the only way to do that is to have our bodies build up their um, antibodies and immunity. So I get Boris wasn't talking for Boris. Boris was talking because of what he's specialist has, has told him. So he's a little bit of one up. He's still wrong. I think he should lock everything down and stop the spread. That's what I feel. But in the terms of where he's up against President Trump, President Trump has told 17,000 lies since he's been in office. And it's always about him. He, he, he thinks everything is a TV show and he wants to be the star. And he's made some awful mistakes. I mean, when last week when he addressed the, the, the population about the corona, he said, we've got 15 cases and by next week there'll be none. And then a few days later, there was a thousand infected and it just got all up. He's backtracking. He's spending more time backtracking on the things that he said rather than spending time reassuring the American public. And the worst thing that he's done is, uh, you guys know who Dr. Luciana Burio is. Um, she's on my Facebook wall. This was the, the National Security Council advisor that Obama put in place to deal with um, bi bio defense. Well, she warned Trump two years ago in, 2000, in 2018, she warned him that the next pandemic will be a global nightmare. And 24 hours after she told Donald Trump that, he sacked her. And not only did he sack her, he closed the whole department. So the bio force uh, defense department is non-existent. That's the reason why you've got Mike Pence and Donald Trump standing on uh, in front of microphones, having a clue what to do or how to lead their country. This is, regardless of, of the lies he's told and what he's done or hasn't done for the American people, this is where true leaders really show their, their, their true face. And he is not leading that country at all. It's, it's embarrassing, some of the things that are going on with Trump. And all he needs to do is one thing, listen to the experts. That's it. But he don't listen to nobody. And I think that, that's, that, we, have, that we need to see that change. We need to see him just keep his mouth quiet, stand in the back, and let the experts stand in the front and talk sense. Yeah, Bertram? Yeah, look, I mean, at the end of the day, I think when you have a... There's reasons why we're the stage we're in the U.S., right? The demographics are changing. People are concerned. If you're the majority, you want to make decisions to protect what you already have. That's the fundamental. No different from the U.K., mm. that whole nationalistic sentiment. And trying to the majority trying to maintain their stronghold, and I understand that concept. But at the end of the day, you're talking about people's lives. You're talking about somebody leading your organization, whether it's a company, a, a number profit, a for-profit organization, or a country, which have the capability and the skill set to lead you and lead. If you say to to your people that I don't take responsibility for what transpires in my regime, then you're not a leader. A leader has yeah. to be, you know, it's like the captain of the ship. I, I was sending my staff home the other day. I run a New York office for my company, for example. And I say, I'm not leaving until everyone leaves. And everybody's like, well, you're going out with a ship captain? I was like, yes, that's what you have to do. If you're going to put yourself at risk, that's what leadership does. You assume the position as a leader. And if you can assume that position, then you have to be able to deal with the consequences mm. and what comes with that territory. So it's very disheartening. It's very disappointing. I have no confidence in the leadership. But... He was elected. This wasn't some dictatorship overthrow. It wasn't some regime change. He was elected by whatever electoral college, yeah. not by the majority. Mm. And we have to live with that. Yeah. But as, as you said, the strategic part of how you should operate in terms of the US, what measures you should undertake, and you need the support network and the tools to be able to manage these things. As you say, disbanded that group that supposedly were experts in this field and could marshal resources to address it in a meaningful way. And now it's a reactive way of trying to address this, which is laughable. Yeah, and before so, I, go, I go to Tony, um, I just want to start springing out a lot of knowledge and things that, 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 that are going on right now. So we're not in a lockdown stage yet, but if um, some people was asking me what a lockdown looks like, and I can only take from what's happened in China, from what's happened in Italy. In Italy, if the police find you on the street without a good reason, in other words, if you're not traveling, if you're not a journalist, 
if you're if you ha if you're not a doctor or nurse, um, it's three months in jail or a twenty five euro twenty five thousand euro fine uh, for the Italians at the moment. And I'm hearing in the UK, if it happens, it's going to be something to that effect. So if you're caught on the street, there'll be a jail sentence or there'll be a huge, massive fine. And uh, and that will be the way how they go, that they'll go. Uh, the lockdown, obviously, schools and colleges first, cafes, restaurants, all non-essential shops uh, will go down first. But the, 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 what's striking with the UK is this full immunity because infection in the future is inevitable. Um, so uh, they want about 70 to 80 percent of people to get infected and, uh, and and they just want to throw lambs to the slaughter. And I have a huge issue with that. My sister, I was on a phone call to my sister today and she said to me, you know, she said the UK government has spent all this time trying to repair the bad decisions they've made over the decades with um, all of their gold with all of their money, all of their poor trades, we don't produce anything. They've made so much mistakes. Their answer is, oh, and by the way, you can't retire at 60 anymore. You've got to retire at 67. And, and, and that's because they screwed up. So we are constantly paying for the mistakes that the government has made because of their lack of foresight and poor investments as a country. We are the ones that are paying for that. And it's the same thing that will happen in this, in this instance. And I, I said to my sister, what annoys me is these old age pensioners who have been asked to suffer, they're, they're not hardly getting any of their, their pensions, and my age group are who are being asked to, to, to work another seven years. These are the people that have built, the, that we've paid up to 40, 50 years of taxes. When we retire, we deserve to have that money because we have been taxpayers. It's not like we're tax dodgers, yeah? We have deserved to have that money. So to say that we can't get it or we have to wait later is an abomination of the system, in my opinion. Tony, what's your thoughts at the moment? What's your thoughts, mate? Wow, 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 and wow. <laughs> this is such a big, big issue. I mean, uh, how can we do it justice in this shit amount of time? I'll try and proceed my very quickly. I feel that there are things in play which both. And it's not because I'm a continual conspiracy theorist, but there are some things which just don't make sense to me. And I'll give you an example. We don't seem to be in any stories about this person was at the edge of coronavirus and survived it. To this person, because you had it, and let's talk about it. Okay, Mikel Arteta has got coronavirus. He's come out, he said, Yeah, I've been I've been diagnosed. I'm self-isolating, thank you very much, and that is it. When you consider 96% or 94% of the people who who contract it survive, well, what's going on with people? Because surely they'll be like, okay, well, you survived it now. Do you get a yellow tag around your neck to say, I've had it, I'm good to go now? Yeah? No, you just walk out, you do your business, you carry on like if nothing's happened. But where are all these people? It just doesn't make it all. Then you've got the old people. The old people were close to dying anyway. They were literally on the edge of dying and they contracted something and they died. And I'm not being cold-hearted, but this thing that came and put them over the edge. And I've got old people in my family. I currently look after a very old lady who is my great aunt. She's 90 years old, 90 years young. She's very strong. But I fear for her if she leaves the house and goes into contact with people who have coronavirus. I also have a fear that I will contract coronavirus and give it to her. Yeah, yeah. 
So I'm very conflicted with some of the things that are going on in society. However, I totally understand the concept that, you know what, let everybody just get it. Mm. And everybody will survive. Yeah. Everybody will survive. The, the, the mortality rate is smaller than flu. Yeah? So more people are dying of flu. More people are dying of hunger. More people are doing dying of HIV. Yeah? Than all this, uh, this, this thing that's going on. So I'm very conflicted with what news we're getting, how it's coming out, what information we're being given, and what information, more importantly, we aren't being given. So where does that leave me in terms of my confidence in the government and not? Well, I've never had confidence in the government. And that regardless of whether it's Boris, Dee Khan, whether it's Jeremy Corbyn, whether it's Donald Trump, whether it's President Obama, everybody is flawed in politics, yeah? So I don't try and go, oh, Boris, you're the worst going out. Ultimately, for me, President Obama, the most military uh um, forceful president of all time in American history. I don't give him a pass. Yeah. Love you to death, Obama. Think the family situation in, 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 in terms of what you've got was great. But I don't give him a pass on some of his policies. I don't think he did great things for black people. And quite frankly, um, Donald Trump doing better for a lot of Americans. Okay. But that doesn't mean to say I like Donald Trump. I think he's, I think he's a, a, a pedophile. Things about him, but clearly a lot of people like the guy, and he's about to win another election. I'm going to give it to you straight. Yeah. Um. So, in terms of are the are the government doing any better than the German government, for instance? The government doing any better than the Spanish government? Well. Not really, but not worse. We're not uh, we're not worse. Yeah, span into lockdown mode tomorrow. We'll probably mm. be in lockdown mode in two weeks. C'est la vie. Yeah. What are, what are we supposed to do? Are we supposed to go into lockdown right now? Because as far as I'm concerned, you can't just go. The whole the whole place is on. You can't because what that means is. All the transportation is finished. Yeah? All the schools are closed. Everything is shut down. Yeah? And you'd stop the transmission of the coronavirus, as they've done in China. Mm. However, will we build that Im immunity for when the second version of it comes, as they predict, in the future? So... I don't know the answer to that question. And the reason I don't know the answer to that question is because there's things about this virus that we really don't know. There are answers to the questions that they say, oh, well, it came from the bat stew. Oh, it came from the laboratories that they've got next to Wuhan. And it's this, it could be droplets invented by various people people in various places, various places. Now, as I said, I don't like to get into conspiracy theory. However, when you've got so little truth, yeah, how do, you, how do you make that he's telling the truth and she's not? You know, is Angela Merkel doing any better than Boris Johnson in her country? So yeah, I really am conflicted with the, the information that's coming through. And I know you're one that reads a great deal of stuff. But like you, Apollo, I have a hell of a lot of stuff. But I don't believe everything I read. I question everything. And everything I've heard so far does not lead me to a, a, a confirmed diagnosis or, or, or solution. To say This is what we should be doing. And that is 100% correct. Mm -hmm. Nothing is telling me that shutting everything down is 100% the right thing to do. Yeah, because there's one thing when you shut everything down, but then you have to disinfect everything. We know as soon as they sent the Arsenal players home, 
London Coney training ground was sprayed, disinfected, everything. So, you know, in terms of what we know, Ebony, before I come to you, um, Ebony was talking about face masks and they only cushion about 20% of the blow because um, do they work? Not really, because the virus isn't floating around in the air. The virus is, is, is on surfaces, it's carried through your hands. And what we know from the testing and, and science at the moment is it's transferred from your hands to your face. That's where the biggest transformation is. So admittedly, it's trans it's, it's, that's how it's transferred in or inhaling the droplets. So when people sneeze or when these droplets are lying around, it's because of sneezing or coughing or anything like that. They can come out either way. Uh, it does. You don't have to be close to people. Somebody could have coughed on the table or sneezed on a, an, on a on an armchair, and had walked away an hour or two or three hours ago, and you've come and sit sat on that chair and put your hands on it, and and taken the droplets into your hands. And all you need to do is this: scratch your nose, scratch your eyes, scratch your mouth or your lips, and that's how it's transferred. And that's that's the real problem. That's why they're saying now it doesn't matter about uh, hand sanitizers or anything. That doesn't matter. All you need to do is keep washing your hands. Keep your hands clean because your hands are the thing that is the most dangerous thing up to, which is transferring this virus. It's the hands to the face. And if we talk about how much times a human touches their face every day, well, well we're going... What do you do? What? Yeah. I mean, I don't get this hand, this constant need to wash and wash and wash and wash and wash. Yeah? If you are anywhere in public, anywhere in public, think about this. What can you possibly do? You touch something, you wash your hands. You can't possibly be going to... If You and I sat in the, in, in the Emirates Stadium last week. Yeah? I walked up the stairs. I try not to touch the railings on the side. But lo and behold... I go to a counter where I'm going to touch stuff, yeah? A man hands me a, a pint. He must have touched it to, to fill it. I've touched it to drink it, mm -hmm. yeah? It's just impossible to keep washing, yeah. keep washing, keep washing. Otherwise, you're constantly doing a, I've, I've touched something, I go to the bathroom. I go back to where I started, I touch something, I go. So if you're not going to wash it, what can you do? You hand sanitize. Okay, so you hand sanitize. And guess what? Over a period of time, you're hand sanitizing, you're hand sanitizing. But you touch, oh, I guess touch something, let me hand sanitize. What would be a more effective method of not do, not having to do that consistently would be to wear gloves. Yeah? yeah, yeah? So if you gloves. really want to continue I, 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 I don't, I don't that, think that works yeah? either, actually, guys. This whole concept of wearing gloves, yeah. I don't know what that means. Don't exactly. you touch your face with your gloves? Don't you touch your face with your gloves? Yeah. Yeah, it, it exactly was my point. Yeah. That was where I was going next. So that was where I'm saying is literally this whole thing of just keep washing your hands. It, if I'm on a train to go into the Emirates Stadium, I'm hearing literally a pin drop right now. And as I hear people not making noises, I hear ting and I hear <coughs> sorry. <coughs> Sneak. And I'm like, oh, here we go. Here we go. Mm. It's just anywhere. You cannot you cannot move anywhere in public and see um, sneezing, anything of that ilk. So you know, disease, um, viruses are everywhere. They've always been everywhere. Mm. I work mm. in a school, yeah? And every day, all I see is kids coughing, coughing. Um, little Johnny, put your hands over your mouth when you cough. Little Johnny, put your hands over your mouth when you cough. He's not listening to me. Mm. He's coughing in my face. Mm. I can't do anything about it. So what yeah. do I do? Do I say to the school, I tell you what, because he's coughing in my face with that over his mouth, I'm self-isolating because I don't want him coughing in my face. Yeah, yeah. So, so... I um, can't do that. I'm not... I'm not going to keep until the school gets closed. My, my point is there's no real solution that that technically makes sense. Washing hands consistently, nobody can physically do that unless you're constantly <clears throat> in the tap next to you. Yeah? 
and we and you've explained it the sanitizing thing just doesn't work either yeah and, and and this is the reason why there's so many people catching it tony the, because all these things are, are in place yet hundreds and thousands of people are still getting the illness because you can't really stop it there is if truth hand on heart can't. you can't you can't the only way to stop it is to tell everyone to stay at home there's no way you can incubate this this thing regardless <sighs> what you do you know and and that's why you know you've just said it yourselves the, the answer to your question is that's the reason why there's so many people who are getting contaminated because you can't stop it. You just physically can't do it. Those are things that that will help you. And they need it, uh, go on. And they need to let everybody get it. So if you know what, let everybody just get it. Then is he doing the wrong thing by doing that? Only time will tell. I, I know yeah, we're going to reduce, reduce, reduce the world population. I know we're getting overpopulated, but saying that everyone should get it when you know a group is susceptible to it, a certain demographics in the population, then you turn that demographics, you don't care about them. Mm. So if you're saying that the so certain demographics are vulnerable to this disease, and you're saying let everyone get it, and you know they're susceptible, and they may die, then if I'm that older generation, I'm going to say, why should I care about you then? I'm not allowing that to happen. You older then focus on the young. And I'm not sure if an older person would buy into that strategy actually all right let me, um, we're gonna go to ebony but before i go to so, ebony i just so want to I, I, I just want to knock off the travel thing first i get a lot of questions saying to me apollo i've got holiday booked next week i've got holiday booked next month um what's going to happen in regards to those well already guys we know 47 countries are on lockdown so thousands of flights have been cancelled by airlines and it, 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 airline take their policies from uh i think for us it's the official uk foreign travel advice so go to .gov.uk and go to to the official foreign travel advice and uh there they will tell you whether you're actually covered or not or whether you're if you go whether you're at risk of invalidating your insurance policy because for these for some some of these people the big airlines and the big companies will insure you and you'll maintain cover but the smaller ones won't so your rights will depend on whether the choice of airline you're flying with uh, just make sure you read the small print in your insurance policy. Read it carefully, guys, um, because you may not be able to travel uh, in terms of getting stuck into a country and facing their own restrictions. Uh, I know people who are already who are saying, no, I don't care. I'm going. I'm going. And what happens if you fly over that, to that country and then they cancel and then you can't get back and you're not insured? That's a nightmare. That's an absolute traveling nightmare to go through. Ebony, talk to me. All right, look, um, as far as I'm concerned, you know, th this whole coronavirus thing, it's nothing new. OK, if you look on the backs of if you look on the back of Dettol spray, it will actually say it will say something about coronavirus. Um, so it's nothing new. Um, is it something that, you know, people are not being taken care of with? Because the hot because the world is uh, pop overpopulated. I'm hearing this theory that. The world is pop, um, overpopulated. There's too many billions of people in the world, so therefore we're going to allow people to die. That's 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 one theory that can go into deeper discussion at another point. I just think that with regards to the whole COVID nineteen, I think this government in the UK have been absolutely, as I said earlier, absolutely useless. They've they've not been transparent. They've uh, they've not come forward um, in terms of um, you know advising people what to do other than wash your hands and sing happy birthday, which is completely useless. This is why, and, and it's true though. And you know when we have a completely utter ethwit like Boris Johnson telling us, advising us, it's about, it's like being it's like me advising a surgeon how to do his or her job. Completely useless. Um, with regards to basic hygiene everybody knows what to do and the fact that companies in the uk have actually taken taken um taken actions into their own hands and closed down um whatever and, and you know cancelled events they're not waiting on the government the government is completely used to it when we're hearing about certain people um, being uh, suffering, certain people dying. It's a case of, you know what, let me do what I need to do. I'm, I'm not going to wait on the government to tell me what to do. I know what to do. 
if you're running a business and you're running an event that has over 500 people because apparently you know that's what we're being told if, if there's more than 500 people um don't don't care don't carry out the event fine so companies have actually gone out there and they've actually taken the stance themselves without waiting on this completely useless government to tell us what to do because we like I said, we don't need to wait for the government to tell us what to do, okay? We know what to do. We know about basic hygiene. I'm not saying wash your hands every five minutes because that is not possible. Even in the job that I work, I'm not going to say what company I work for, but it, I deal with customers on a daily basis. So there are times when I will be washing my hands more than normal, but not every five minutes. If you're going to use hand sanitizers, uh, it has to have, a hand sanitizer has to have six, Six, at least 60% of alcohol, um, otherwise it's completely useless. Um, I think the way that Italy, Italy have taken the stance has been great because they're saying, look, we don't want any more people suffering. So anybody who's caught outside, <coughs> you're going to be fined. Great. Okay. Absolutely great. As How far is that as great concerned. if they've got so many deaths? How's that great yeah. if they've got all yeah, their yeah. deaths? Yeah, but the thing, yeah, but the thing is though, if if they if they if they're on lockdown, if they if they've decided to go on lockdown and they've actually seen so many people, so many people have died, and it's a case of all right, okay, look, you don't we're, we're locking you down. It, I I know that there's I know that there's there's a lot of people have died, and I know that there's a lot of people have died in this country as well. But the fact what? of the matter is, look, How if people have, in Italy, it makes no sense. I think Italy. Yeah, but, I yeah, think but, Italy had two hundred yeah, um, and fifty people die today alone there, which was when I heard I, that I nearly fell off my chair. How are you going to call that a success? I, how do you call that saying, a success? I'm not, I'm not saying it's a success. What I'm what I'm saying is is that if they're actually looking at the, if they're looking at the numbers of people that have died, then okay, fine, we're going to go. All right, that's it. We're going on lockdown, and that's something that maybe. I don't know if the UK are going to go on lockdown. Apparently, we're going to go on lockdown tomorrow or Tuesday. I think it'll be Tuesday I, or Wednesday. I know we, yeah. Okay, Tuesday or Wednesday. Is that too late? Is that too early? Do we need to go on lockdown? Something needs to be done because no, no one's telling us what to do. All right. Mm -hmm. So this is why this is why people have taken their own actions into their own hands and saying, look, you know, I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to work. I will self isolate myself. You know, people are, um, people um, are being sent home. People are being isolated, but uh, they're being uh, treated uh, for it. So that so they're actually being isolated, not on their own volition, but they're being isolated. Um, what if what if a child gets um, COVID nineteen? You know, w w will parents be fined? Will parents be fined if they, if they decide? All right, look. I don't want my child to get COVID-19, uh, so therefore I'm keeping him or her at home. Bearing in mind that in this country, if a child doesn't go to school, the parents get fined. Yeah, yeah. So what, so, so what are, par what are parents in, to do? In, 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 in that respect, um, and then we that's go just, back to we go we go back to the joke on Thursday when Boris Johnson said he's not going to lock it down. What happened 24 hours after? Schools and colleges themselves took it among you know their own opportunities to lock themselves down without the government saying so so if well, well, it's, up to, it. it's up to the school well, to well, make that decision and i think well, uh workplaces have already told workers to work from home so regardless of what boris hasn't done you said you, yourself ebony that people are smart enough to know what to do and in that respect exactly. schools have already started to shut it down themselves well um, well, 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 well my theory is and like yeah, i said yeah, you know listen parents guys, are no being children fine. have the died parents. no children have died yeah but then what happens Don't what forget, happens if no the child children have COVID? died i'm not saying that children no have, children, children have died, have died. Been Sorry. Millions I'm not, of people yeah, the totally millions the youngest of people have died, have, have contracted the disease. Yeah, I know adults. I know it's only a contraction, it's not a death. death. Yeah, Tony, the youngest that has yeah, been I, reported no children that have died, died. Is, is six years old, and that that child had asthma. Exactly. Yeah, that was that's other the youngest. It wasn't yeah, yeah, the disease yeah, that killed yeah. him. It was so, other. So, so guys, guys, we, yeah, we have okay, look. Tony, we have seen situation in Wuhan, for example, where the doctor who first 
sort of broadcast this to the world and talk about the spread of the virus, he died. The head of the hospital that where the doctor worked also died. There are a number of nurses who were there also, and they showed you one in the this environment. They showed you two of them, one contract, two contracted, one died, one didn't. So we can't make this the holistic comment that says no one under a certain within who are young have not died. We don't have all the data, we don't have the mission. It appears to be that their immune system better combat the virus, but we can't make that statement, that blanket statement to say no one has died. We don't have enough intelligence of information yeah, to make can. informed decisions yeah, anyway. Can. Can and I, the information that we get keeps yeah. changing. Can I just say can I'll, I just say that? I'll just say this way. If there was a child, if a child that died, if a child, if a single dies of coronavirus, not one parent, including myself, will send their child to school. Because you know where the where the most common place for the virus is infection is in schools. Yeah? So let me tell you something. If five if how many thousands of people have died from coronavirus? It takes one child to die, and every parent is, is, is yanking their child out of school. So you show me the fact right. where one child UK, is Tony, died. Right? Tony, you're and talking in the UK, Tony, or are you no, talking globally? No, no, globally, globally. If you've got, but a, are you sure of that? Are you, I, I haven't seen the data that says they are. Died. Have you seen it? I have not seen a single child every that's single died. Case? Yeah, but hasn't a but child died? You see every single case hasn't and you know. Child, I don't know. Hasn't a child died in this country already, or did that child die elsewhere? I mean, the fact oh. of the matter is, sorry? Yeah, it was elsewhere. It, it was, it was it in wasn't, this country. It wasn't okay. in this country, no. All right. Okay, all right. So, 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 at, so, I don't know. I guess parents will look at that case and think, okay, well, yes, you know, children, you know, children are susceptible to getting colds and, and, and whatnot in school because children cough. They don't necessarily all the time cover their mouth. Some adults don't cover their mouth. So therefore, if a child gets it, goes home, parents don't realise, and their grandparents who may have an underlining uh, issue, they they catch it and die. What happens? You know, will, will, will adults or will parents be fined for, for taking the precaution that their children have uh, have COVID and they want to stay at home because because that is the because the fact of the matter is parents in this country will get, get fined if they take their children out early. So is is that is that an issue? And as for, as far as the US is concerned, I mean, you know, the whole whole thing that the fact that Donald Trump hasn't dealt with it at all, the fact that he's actually completely completely and utterly closed down. A department that deals with such with such um, ep epidemics and endemics is no yeah, surprise it, because it, this is some this is somebody who thinks that he knows everything. It's about him, you know. I don't have, to, and, and he's he's been testing himself, so therefore he's, he was already making it about himself anyway. So the fact that he's actually closed down the department and then he's got and then him and that ever, other idiot Mike uh, Mike Pence, they haven't got a clue. They haven't got a clue what they're doing. Just like Boris Johnson. All right, Boris Johnson is listening to um, to um, health advisors and he's listening to experts. After how long? How long has it taken Boris Johnson to actually listen to an advisor, to, some, to an expert? And the only reason why he's thinking about a lockdown is, is, is for the simple fact is that people in this country have, have taken it upon themselves to think, you know what, I'm not going to wait on Boris Johnson, the guy's an idiot, I'm, I'm going to take matters into my own hands. That's the only reason why he's thinking about a lockdown, and why Tuesday? Yeah, why Tuesday? Well, why not, why, why not well, the thing about that, Ebony, is, as I said, on Thursday, he didn't, he didn't pull the trigger on it, and on Friday, the population, and I can't really talk about what happened up north, I can only talk about London, because we physically saw that the trains were empty, that the streets were empty, Everyone took it about. In other words, they didn't listen to you, Boris. They heard what was going on around the world, and they well, thought exactly, when exactly. you came out with your statement, they thought this is bullshit. I'm staying at home. So, and, and I think that he's seen the results of that. He saw uh, he's not on my train. He he saw that his words not fell on, on my deaf, deaf Maybe not Tony, but I, I I have to go by what what I've seen and and and, and the, the people in my company. 
you know, we we also pulled everybody off the road. And uh, so if, if yeah, so what, what what's happening, guys, is this is that you see a lot of individuals making personalized decisions about their own safety. Hmm. They put a lot of pressure on management in their company, but whether or not they want to work in an environment where they have to congregate with people, where they have to take public transportation, and they're not comfortable with that. Leadership in those companies then responded by saying, I want to keep my workers happy because down the road, some that's going to come back to bite you as a leader. Yeah. I'm going to make informed decisions about having people work remotely. The only challenge companies are facing is working remotely have its own challenge around bandwidth, about engagement, about how you manage, about how you supervise, about how you make sure your people are doing the work that they're supposed to be doing. So that's challenging, but companies are working around that because we have a, we have a very mobile society today. We have people who are in this glib society where they actually are working, right? They actually are working remotely. They're working more significant contractors. So they're making their own decision. And the younger population don't have tolerance for this whole hierarchical structure that we have built over years. This whole system where they can't make individualized decisions, they job hop, you know, to, to things individually. So the society is forcing the government. They're actually yeah. leading the government. I totally what direction agree. are we going? I totally I'm telling you, in the I, U.S., for listen, example, people are working did, from home, and the companies react and say everyone can work from home. Yeah, uh, yeah but the thing is, that not everybody, not every, I not everybody know what's, can. Yeah, I didn't sorry. know what social I didn't know what social distancing was until last week. <laughs> I, was, I didn't I didn't know what it meant. And when I spoke to someone else about it, it was like, yeah, me too. I mean, these are the this is the new world we live in now. You know, there's some um yeah. before I go to Ebony, uh, some it's, some good questions here. Guys, saying, guys, what's guys, gonna happen to guys, listen. Hold what on, Tony. Hold on, Tony. With, Tony hold on, with, hold on, Tony, with, hold on. Um, Sebas asks, what's going to happen to GCSEs? Uh, Tony, can you answer that question since you're a teacher? <laughs> yeah, on, on, on the, there is a rumour that the children that are currently going through GCSEs, if they end up not having to take them because of isolation, the teachers will be asked to give the marks on based on what they feel the student would achieve in each of their grades. That's what they're talking about. No decision has been made, but that is the suggestion currently. However, I do want to address some issues. People saying things when they're not really facts. Yeah? Guys, don't scaremonger people. People are still going to work by the bucket load. Yeah? Lots of people are isolating. In my school, 200 teachers go to my school. Yeah? 20 of them are self-isolated. That still means 180 teachers are still at school serving 700 students. Yeah? If four students are off just got yeah, a I'm cold not, I, or they yeah. got a flu, which they like that, I'm, still, I'm still looking after seven, 680 students. So some of these things so totally hot the press. are inflammatory. Let's get a check, Tony, totally hot off the press. New York City schools will be closed. Oh, yeah. There's a reason. Yeah, wow. Yeah. New York City school, it's, it's reactive. Yeah. New York City schools are going to be closed. Just got a text from someone yeah. in the system. And you know why, you know why Tony? Because I can tell you, I, I used to take the train to work, but I take the bus to work. My bus is never full, yeah. so the price is three times the price yeah. of the train. And when I went to work last week, Monday, before we start working from home, my bus was packed to the hill because no one wanted to take the train because the subway system is not the cleanest in the world. Uh, right, the bus, the private bus system. So what is happening is this: yeah. yes, some means of transportation going to be packed because people are afraid that they're going to be work, be traveling with a yeah. general populace, and they don't want to be exposed that way. They want to control as much yeah. as possible their own environment. So Tony, don't disagree with you that people are still going to work. Yeah. But in some instances, people feel they're forced to go to work. If you're sixty percent of your paycheck to paycheck, and your company doesn't close down, you have to go to work. But a number of companies in the corporate environment that I work in there have been working remotely. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, not saying, still working, but I'm, yeah. I'm not saying that, that you know, people, you know, I'm not scaremongering anybody. What I say to people is just carry on with your normal life, but just carry out basic health, uh, health and hy uh, basic health and hygiene practices. Wash your hands. I'm not saying wash your hands every five minutes, but wash your hands after you use a toilet. Well, I work, the amount of people, the amount of people that come out of the toilet oh without washing God. their hands. The amount of people that cough and touch oh, um, t and touch machines and touch barriers and touch windows and touch the seats. It's like 
Where's where's yes. the basic hygiene? Yes. All you need to do, all you need to do is just cough in the tissue, throw it away. So Please in the tissue, throw it yeah. away. Cough in the cook of your, your arm. You know. Who's doing that? Basic hygiene. Who's doing that? Who's there doing are that? adults. Have and you it's seen cough in the tissue? I don't even walk with a tissue. <laughs> That's what that's what, like, that's what we're advised to do, but most people, yeah, but most people don't. Most people don't. Okay, let me give most you a scenario. Don't. Let me give you a scenario. Yeah, cool. Okay, let me ask you a question. Most people aren't walking with tissues. If they are, they've got yeah. it in a bag. If you walk and all of a sudden you feel a cough coming, <coughs> you just cough. You don't have time to go. Let me get me back. <coughs> I don't have time to do that. I just cough yeah. in my hand. <coughs> and I yeah, yeah, most people down, cough in the hand. My place, yeah? people, most adults, most adults will cough with in their hand. hand. To, be yeah. honest, to be honest, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, most sorry, people, listen, most sorry people Ebony, I'm, I'm just going to... JK said, does anyone know the exact deaths worldwide? I'm just going to put the numbers up now. So that we can I carry on. Yeah, number, yeah. yeah, I'm just going to put them up. Yeah, you know, you, you, know, you know, most people, to be fair, do not carry a tissue. Let's be real here. So if a you're going to cough, in their hand. If, if, yeah. if, if, if you're Guess not, what? if you don't have a tissue, Ebony, if you don't have a wait. tissue, sorry. Yeah. Okay, no, so let me just is, tell you a couple most... of real examples. Yes, yesterday I attended a conference on youth crime. And at the conference, everybody was packed into this one hall. People sitting this close to each other. And guess what? There's people coughing, sneezing, coughing, sneezing. Nothing is in the air causing an adverse reaction. Because mm. it's in the room. I could say it was not quite as it should. And what that did was it caused people a cough, or a, or a sneeze, yeah? I found myself sneezing, yeah? yeah? But what I couldn't do was go, mm -hmm. hang on a second, can everybody who's coughing and sneezing, can you walk out the room and go get a tissue? So I don't it's know. It's not going to happen. Terms. I couldn't do that. I was in the arena. So. Yeah, I know. Let me give know. you it's another example. Right, hang on, hang on. Let me give you another example. This morning, I went to see my son play football. I'm running on the sidelines. Guess what? It rasps cool and it's a little bit rainy. So what happens mm. is my eyes start watering, yeah? And guess what? Water, those, I, those droplets of, of water that are coming from my eye, my nose starts getting a little bit streamy. Sudden, I'm like, oh, tissue. Again, Fix you know, some people that have tissue just use your hand. Yeah, I'm, I'm in yeah. yeah? I'm Tony, 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 and that's what Tony, Tony, let's, let's just think about this. Let's, yeah, let, let, me finish, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. I, I understand what all of you are saying in relation to personal hygiene. Yeah, this comes down to that same thing that I've been talking about all week. Do you wash your meat? Yeah, if you're black, you wash your meat. Yes. <laughs> if you're white, you probably don't. Yeah? You probably don't. Yeah, so all this thing about oh well, don't worry, the the, the white sterilize when you put it in the pan and the, the the heat kills all the germs. Sorry, but black people, we wash the meat. We wash the meat. We put the the lemon yeah. shot it fresh. Yeah. Mm. So all these things that we're saying we should be doing, we do anyway. Yeah, but guess what? Yeah, At that, the end of the football I'm match today, though. with my family. All the kids get, oh, yeah, 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 thank you very much, blah, blah, blah. Everybody hugging up everybody. And guess what? I'm like, you know what? If they spread the, they spread the germ, nothing I can do. Because so, so so yeah, and I know the kids, their noses are down. Point, and, yeah, but people are still hugging. So the virus. Bumping. Yeah, so the virus today, if you check the percentage, we have 5,000 plus have died from 162,000. Extrapolate that number, it works out between 3 and 4%. Based on the world's population, between 7.5 and, and 8 billion people, that works out between 2, 10, and 300 million people. Are you comfortable with that amount of people dying to prove a point and to get your body immune to this? Or are you more comfortable with that 210, between 210 and 300, can contribute to society? 
and you want them here. That's a decision the world has to make, right? Mm-hmm. This whole concept of, this is not the flu, where you have, you know, 10 basis points of people die. So you may have 8,000 in the U.S. or 5,000 in the U.S. versus someplace else. This is, you're talking about millions of people. Yeah, the, 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 worst thing, the worst thing yeah. about this is ignorance. A lot of people are being ignorant to this uh, coronavirus at the moment. And I just have to laugh. I've seen people walking into shops, laughing at people wearing gloves and masks and everything else, taking the piss out of them. And they're saying, you know, look at these people overreacting, overreacting. It's just like, bro, there are 47 countries on lockdown right now and they're not locked down for a joke. You know, it's like last week, Donald Trump tried to blame the coronavirus on the on the Democrats. He just like, it's a Democrat's fault. <laughs> it was the most stupidest thing that you could ever hear. Stuff and this, like and this that. is what I mean. But the thing is, his base is stupid enough to believe that. Some of them, not all of them. Yeah, yeah but yeah, but the thing is, though, <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, but the thing is, though, it's like if when you have when you have a president like Donald Trump and a prime minister like Boris Johnson that don't take it seriously, and then and then they have people dying in their countries, and then they suddenly think, oh, right. Okay, what do we do now? Oh, this I know. Let's put the, <laughs> let, 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 let's let's um let's call the football matches. I, I don't know if the football matches in America were postponed on, on the team's own volition or the MLS's own volition. I know that in this country, it, but in this country, it was done on the, the EPL did it on the own, and the FA did it on their own volition. Okay, yeah, right. so when you got people dying, um. And it's a case of, oh, I know. Let's put the country on lockdown. Oh, I know, says Boris. Let's wait till Tuesday. Why wait till Tuesday? Why wait till Tuesday? It's it's because he's he's, he's obviously trying to keep business alive as long as possible. And as I said, some small businesses... And this is what I mean. Yeah, it's money. It's money, man. I I, I understand. (laughs) And and, and I'm sorry to say this, and, and I know Brexit is not what we're talking about, but he's got Brexit on his brain. That's what this is all about. Yeah. He's using that, the coronavirus as a yeah. smokescreen. Because that's the reason why people voted. That's the reason why people voted him in is because of Brexit. Exactly. But I just want to get to exactly. eighteen. Eighteen asked me a question, and he said, "Are we heading into re- a recession?" Um, my simplest answer to that is yes. And uh, remember, the economical predicted growth of this year was only going to be one point eight percent. It, it, it was 2.3 percent last year so our predicted growth this year this is without the coronavirus was going to be half percent of a percent less spending than last year so if you know anything about how those things work um there's been 33 recess- recessions since 1854 yeah and they normally last between six to 18 months but there hasn't been a recession since 2008 we've gone 12 years without a recession so the fact that last year and this year was was showing a decline, and and let's remember, um, re- a recession means when there's a general decline in economic activity. So it re- it kind of occurs when there's a drop of spending versus demand. We've seen the price of oil drop. Why? Because they're producing too much oil than what we can spend. So that devalues the price of oil. The whole thing works as a conundrum when it comes to a, a, a recession. So yes, we are heading headstrong full blast into a recession and those smaller companies won't survive it you know airlines people travel bans means people won't be traveling so guess what the smaller airlines are gonna go kaput and and all of this trying to keep stuff that's open trying to keep businesses open trying to get that's just looking after the top half of the of the uh, companies that are buying these politicians that are uh, putting money in these politicians' pockets. They want things to keep active and strong as long as possible because they're the ones that are going to, you know, they don't care about us people. And, 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 it, and, it's, and, it's, the ri- yeah. and it's the richest people that will actually benefit from this whole coronavirus because at the end of the day, actually, they, they, can afford, they, can afford, they can afford to be ill. They can afford to have time off. People like I, the four of us, we no, can't I, afford I, I to have time off. Actually, yeah, I, I do think yeah, that if, on, if there's, there's political implications to some of these decisions, I think they're trying to do what they think is best for society at large. Mm. And there's no easy decisions here, right? We can we can be in our chair and make these hindsight view about how they should operate. Mm. I do think from where I sit, though, is if you want to prolong your economy, if you want to not get into a recession, you have to close that window where economic activity is going to not occur 
to allow you then on a more long, you're going to make long-term decisions versus short-term decisions. Yes. You yes. can't want to keep this open as long as possible. What happens is then I make decisions based on my own fears, my mm -hmm. own individual situation to try to mitigate risk to myself. Does it help the large economy? So mm -hmm. I won't travel. I won't take cruise lines. I won't take airplanes. I won't go out and buy shops. Mm -hmm. Economic activity then ceases without the government being able to manage that. Yeah. What they need to do is shut it down for two weeks as short as possible, try to get people to calm down, mm -hmm. To get people comfortable about the number of cases reducing because when cases reduces people get more comfortable the virus is receding exactly. it may not be yeah. it may be false reality but they get that perspective and then what happens is you build up that, that confidence and people go back and start spending go back to work otherwise you're going to have is a prolonged situation which doesn't have to be stretched out I totally right agree. now i don't see this being done before the summer yeah, yeah. And, no. and, and you know what that's a great point bertrand because it's short-term pain for long-term gain and that's what we were expecting Boris to do, and he didn't do that. Most of the com com countries that, yeah, most of the countries that have shut down are taking that stance where, look, it's going to be painful for a while. Just hold with us, and then we'll be back up and running. Hopefully, hopefully, um, and stand the best chance of getting our our, our economy back on on on. on I mean, even even. Even Jamaica, even Jamaica, I shouldn't even say even, but Jamaica has actually is on lock. Well, on lockdown, they're not they're not allowing any travel into Jamaica unless it's really important. So yeah, and what that does it, 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 travel. it's going to hurt the economy. But but to your question, Ebony, when you're saying that um, some you know the rich are, uh, uh, are taking advantage of this, actually it's the other way around. Because remember, they in terms of the stock ex stock exchange their companies get devalued, which means that they're worth less. And what that does to, you know, I remember John Paulson, okay. he's an entrepreneur, Bertram knows who he is, American entrepreneur from Harvard. He made 3.7 billion in the last recession in 2008, because what he did is the companies that dropped in value, he, at Harvard, he was studying uh, the stock exchange as, 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 as a, you know, he's a big old man, um, studying the stock exchange. He put, a lot of money into the stock exchange when the recession was happening and ended up making over three and a half billion. And it doesn't work the other way around. If we look at Bill Gates, one of the richest men in the world, he lost about 12.3 billion in the last recession. So that it can, it, it, it works the other way. Rich companies lose money in a recession and people who are investing can make millions and billions. That, that, that's how it works. That's what a recession does for the stock exchange. I mean, right now. Yeah, look, it's, it's I an mean, interesting dynamics. It's, it's interesting dynamics actually because I work on Wall Street, right? So mm -hmm. it's really interesting to see how this whole thing works. Which is, if you look at your four one k, which is a pension account, and I looked at mine three days ago and decided not to look at it ever again until this whole thing changed, because mm -hmm. you have you are gas at where you were to where you are today, right? In terms of people, most people were rich is through the markets. It's through the stock market. Yeah. Because it's not like any other company. You own a company, the company increases value. You invest in a company, you're a poor rider share of that. That's how the concept sort of works fundamentally. Enough of us are not in the market to realize that the market is the best way to get rich. And most people who get rich is sort of through the market. It's not entrepreneurial, it's through that avenue. And most Americans are invested in the market in some way, shape, or form, but they work for a company, they have a defined benefit plan or defined contribution plan, and their money is invested in the market. So the closer you are to retirement, the more you sort of your risk appetite changes, they get more conservative in terms of where you what you invest in. So not all people may be invested in bonds versus stocks and are less affected. If you're like me, who like to take more risk, you invest in stocks, it becomes a bit more challenging to look at your portfolio dwindling day by day yeah. and realize you're not as well off as you were before. And your pension. And so I don't think it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not listening. I don't think that. It's no joke. Yeah, it's, look, yeah, it's tough. It's tough to look at your portfolio and see it getting down more and more and more every day. And can you imagine people who are, who are a friend of mine called me, he said it was a police officer. He called me about the four kids like, what do I do? I'm like, what you do is you sit tight. This too will pass. Yeah. Right? I mean, right. When you try to time the market, you get slaughtered. I mean, right now, surviving a recession is about reducing your expense, guys. That's all it is. You know, working hard, yeah. staying calm in a recession, you should just avoid buying things that you don't need. So, you know, cut down yeah. on your luxuries, cut down on holidays, technology, going out to eat, buying things on credit. If you follow those steps, you should be 100% fine in terms of having to deal with everything because a recession, it's, po it's possible, you know, 
you just have to be smart with your spending. That, that, that's all it means, you know. As far as the stock I, exchange, like Mac, McDonald's right now, it's a good, regardless of where they are as a company, is a good money to put uh, a stock, money on in the stock exchange. Skywork Solutions, Lowe's, yeah, Com Corporation. There are some companies that is worth investing in at the moment. Go on, Ebony. And I was going to say that also, um, you know, what the, the advice that I would give pe to people is look after yourself, okay? Just follow just basic hygiene rules. Stay calm. Um, and, and stay calm, you know. Uh, if you have to buy a mask, and as you pointed out earlier, Apollo, you know, a mask only um, kills off, what, 20%? Yeah, yeah. Of, yeah. Um, because okay, it's your hands that are dangerous, not not not, not ex ex Exactly. But I can understand people wearing masks. I can understand people even wearing big plastic um, containers and bags and over their shoes. I, I can understand all of that. But... It's your hands that really? that's the most effective. Really? I know, I know people actually. I've I've seen you people can wear in a container over there. Yeah, that's a yeah, 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 totally. It, it, do, totally. Yeah, yeah, it's because yeah. it's because not 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 everybody's made the same. I made I had this discussion with the guys on one on one last week, and it's some people suffer from anxiety and depression, and they're not like yeah. you. Yeah, they would yeah. look at this as the end of the world, and and and, and which is a <laughs> yeah. completely different way to you. So we can't rubbish those people. Um, you know, mental health and and anxiety. That's a sickness. That's a real thing. So when you see someone also, like that. You know, yeah, I see people laughing it? at them. Who's causing, causing this? Who's causing this whole? There, there, who's causing this rumor mongering pandemic? There who's are people it? out there. There are who's people out there. Who's causing people to buy toilet roll by the bucket load? There. Why are people buying multiple toilet roll? But I just not answered buying that alcohol? question. I, I just answered that yeah. question. They're, they're not. People, they're not like you, Tony. They're not like you. These are people that suffer with. Uh, mental illness and anxiety. Yeah, and, and and you know you should already know that Tony. They're not. They're not. They don't think the way. No, you do. guys, guys. I don't. I don't think that's the reason why people buy certain products. People want to stack up on things that are imperative that they have to have if they have to be in some place for a sustained period of time. If you're gonna be in your house for two months, but for two months, you need those basic necessities yeah, but yeah, that but you can't can just... do without. But there, can I just say there, that toilet paper? There, there are still companies, pharmaceuticals, healthcare companies, tax services, um, grave diggers, waste disposal, food supermarkets. In a, in a, in this type of climate, those things will still be running, regardless. Can they I, can I just say running. as well? They're essential. I, there's there's non essential and there's essentials, and how to operate so society can live like. You have to have water, but how are you going to get water in your house if somebody's not managing that? You have to have gas. Somebody got to go to work to make sure the gas get turned on. So mm -hmm. essential people like fire persons, medical professionals, people who trade in the stock market, people who settle trades, people who, are, who work in utilities, they have to be able to function in pharmaceuticals. So there's a lot of people who still be on the street, but if you're not essential, then you should stay home at least for a period of time until society gets back to what we deem to be normal. I, I don't think we should disregard or make fun of people who make a certain decision about their own personal situation. That's what Maybe I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Some, I know. But some people yeah. suffer with an illness and we can't, we, people are talking about these people fighting in Lidl's and all that, that stuff. They are, they, they think differently than me and you. Some of these people suffer from mental health issues like anxiety and it's not a joke. I can't laugh at these people because they're doing it for a reason. And some yeah. of them are just Listen, let's, Listen, let's have yes, closing. Can I, can I, can let's have closing. Say, I'm going to go to you, Ebony, in a minute. Let's have the closing everybody arguments. On well. Let's have closing arguments here. Ebony, you go first. Yeah, before we shut can it I just, down. Can I just, yeah, can I just say that um, that one of the things that coronavirus doesn't cause is diarrhea. So, um, so therefore, you know, the multiple buying of toilet paper Why? isn't going. It, it, it's not. It's not going to. Because, because as, as as Apollo said, there are people out there who um who who see uh, a panic and then they act upon it because of their mental health. It's just, you know, that's, that's it. There, there's no other answer to it. That's it. That's it. But you know, it, it doesn't cause. Yeah, diarrhea. there is an answer to it. There is an answer to it. Apollo. That's what's causing it. When people say, "Oh, we're going to run out of this. Oh, we're going to go down on lockdown on this." 
Oh, you won't be able to get this. No, you won't be able to get this. That's when people start panicking, yeah? And it's not to do with somebody's anxiety or depression that they're doing this. It's because other people are just doing things because they don't have the common sense to just stop going, hang on, let me stop this. I'm going to just keep propagating a rumor, yeah? I don't do this rumoring. Yeah, this is why what I said I don't understand all the facts. Without all the facts, I don't start telling people things. Oh, we're all feeling days. I have my own feelings about the way things are going to go, but I don't start propagating it to everybody. And this is the problem in society. As soon as we start saying one thing, everybody else jumps on on the back, and all of a sudden, people get get panicked into. Doing, yeah, and it's got nothing to do with anxiety. I, I think it has. I think it has. Listen, I'll give you. I think it has. You think know, it's got to do are... with anxiety? Yes, I okay, do. I'll tell, I, you, what, I tell, I I'll tell got... you a classic I've... example. i tell you a classic example, yeah. I work in a school. I go in the, I go in the, staff, um, the staff room at my lunchtime, and out of 50 teachers, 45 teachers are losing their minds because they think the world's coming to an end with this coronavirus. And I'm walking in thinking, you guys are supposed to be the, the, the voice of reason. Yeah? Why are you going ballistic over this thing? Yeah? There's no need. You don't need to panic. Yeah? And these are, yeah, these are, these are professional educators. Tony, these are professional educators not, paid yeah, but we're not all to educate the same, Tony. our children. We're not all the same. It's not it's not mental stop blaming mental health on this thing because I tell I'm you not what, mental health, I'm just being real. Wait, wait, wait. I'm being real and I'm saying that we're not all the same. No, guys, guys, but it's it's sense of it's control. Look, it's about control, right? So you can control what you can control. Look, I control making sure I don't run out of certain lots of people basic things that I need for my existence. And that's one of those items which I have control and I have a need for it. I'm going to try to store as much as possible. If I have to be, if I have to hibernate and I have to be quarantined for two months, three months, that's one thing you don't want to run out of. Yeah. So I'm going to stack as much as possible to make sure my base essential, whether it's food and or toilet paper for that matter, that I have that resources. I don't think that's anxiety. I don't think that's something being overly prescriptive terms of what they want to do. I want to make sure I bought all I can food. I, I am one of those people you want to call me. I was in the military. I don't have those fears. I lived through 9-11. I worked in the World Trade Center. I was in the top floor that got crashed into when we moved from there, the first bomb. I was there after we had 9-11. I don't get concerned about these things. I'm not going really to over concerned about coronavirus. Mm -hmm. What you have to do, though, is be prepared. Be prepared so you can manage situations when they occur. And you're not really going to say, if I had known, I have a hindsight view. Be prepared. I bought a lot of that paper because I want to make sure I have that comfort in my own mind. And I'm not going to run out. I have three kids here living with me. I don't want to have to struggle about those things. That's in insignificant. I want to make sure I have it. Mm. And buy my food to make sure I can survive for a month or so. Yeah, Ebony, sorry, you didn't my, finish your, my... your, closing, your closing argument. Sorry, Ebony. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, yeah. Go finish off and then I'll right. to Tony. That's right. I mean, it's, 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 an, emo it's an emotive subject, um, this whole co coronavirus thing and what people do and anxieties that people have. Maybe it is a mixture of both, as somebody pointed out. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. at the end of the day, my, my, my advice to people is, you know, don't panic. But if you, but it, I'm not saying don't care because I'm, I'm somebody who does care. I'm not panicking, I'm concerned. But all I can do for myself is just to make sure, and what I would advise people to do is just, just, just keep to basic hygiene and keep yourself clean. And if you have to wear a mask by all means, but just remember that a mask is going to save you. Yeah, okay. And, and, and yeah, listen, and, there's none available. Also, so if you ain't got any, you ain't got any. <laughs> and, and and if you're gonna go online because people are selling them online, people are making money out of this whole scaremongering thing. Mm, yeah. Be real, you know. So you know, at the end of the day, just keep yourself clean. But then also, other people have to keep themselves clean around you as well because it works both ways. Yeah. So, so yeah. if you're in a room, if you're in a room with five people, you and f and those five other people have to have to also keep clean as well you know if, if, if you're the only person that's clean and know? other people around you and, and other people around you are not keeping themselves guess what that means yeah tony you you don't, catch something. 
Yeah, Tony, you go now. Um, nice one, Ebony. Tony, let's say your closing force. Let's say your closing force. Okay, so listen. The, the necessary information to, to, to really and truly put the bolts and nuts not, and to be able to say he's saying the right thing and she's saying the wrong thing are not there. The facts nobody are not is. there. Yeah, nobody yeah? is. We're, we're still, we're they're there. simply nobody not is. there. Right, speculating. That's all we're doing. We're speculating on a lot of things right now. Yeah? So in terms of like what Ebony said about basic hygiene, well, you either have it or you don't. Yeah? I see people, like Ebony said, walk in the toilet, do their business, and walk out the door, don't go nowhere near the sink. Yeah, you see that a lot yeah? of Arsenal. For them, yeah. <laughs> exactly. You see yeah? that a lot of Arsenal. And for them, that's their basic hygiene. <laughs> for them, I shaped. That's my basic hygiene done. Yeah? So all I'm saying is, yeah, do your basic hygiene. But unfortunately, basic hygiene is not enough. Because quite clearly, if you're in a room with five people and four of them don't do basic hygiene, you can be a super hygienic person, but you're going to catch yeah. something. Yeah. You're going so, to so catch other people something. around you. Other people My around you got to. Mark, don't worry. Because if you catch something, to die. Unless have already depleted in system. Yeah. So right now, stock up on your vitamin C. Drink your iron tablet. Make sure you got your B7 and your B12. Yeah? Go out, find them things. Buy oranges. Look, if I turn my, my camera around, apple, orange, lemon. Yeah? Lemon. Use them things. These are what black people have been using for years. And ginger. Yeah? If you've got children like dose up their dose of all their vital vitamins yeah and stay strong stay yeah i don't fear catching this virus because no, i've got a, set, a very neither, strong neither inside mm. yeah so, yeah i have yeah. a very strong inside yeah when people fall down with all kind of sicknesses i don't catch them thing i drink mcguinness you've got a good immune yeah? system that's what you in the need. cupboard i got a yeah, but that is what, what you should be telling people. Yeah. Stock up but, on your, your, some your essential vitamins. Yeah, make sure your system is capable. And for Christ's sake, please look after your old people there because yeah. they're the ones who they're are the risk. ones. Yeah, because look, the young 90, people ain't got ninety-three percent of no people, young people will people are dying. From this, so. if young people were dying, some lemons. schools would be shut already. Yeah, but look after your old people. Okay, Bertram. Well, let's let's yeah. hear let's hear a closing. Uh... Look, look. I, I believe we all have to be individually accountable um, as individuals and take necessary precautions and follow the directions that are provided by or supposed to be leadership across the globe or in the country that you, you you're located in. You have to be cautious. You have to exhibit prudent behavior to make sure that you don't get infected and you don't infect others. It's the basic fundamentals. Um, the pandemic flew in 1918, killed 50 million people, and we were not a global world then. Think about it. 1918, we didn't have a lot of airlines. We didn't have a lot of people traveling. We didn't have this integration of societies. 50 million people died. This pandemic had a uh, death rate of between 3 and 4%. It then higher, translates it's, it's to a large number of people. Yeah, it's nearly 7% in Italy. Well, yeah, America, well it's, yeah. it's 6,162, so it's up, say, 4%. So you're talking about... Hundreds of millions of people dying if we don't necessarily manage it prudently. Mm. I don't, I'm not a Bush doctor. I must admit, I think some of these things are Bush doctor. There's no empirical evidence to substantiate to me that some of these things we're talking about that are real is actually real. They're not scientifically proven. Mm. I know that science doesn't necessarily capture everything, and we all have views about what's art versus science. I just believe if you act as a valuable member of society, you act in a cautious way, you manage your own in your situation, you don't put us at risk. And, and leadership make the right decision about how we should address this, meaning let's, let's quarantine the world and over that time open the world back up. I think we'll be okay. Otherwise, otherwise, all the old people will 
who don't make necessarily the best decisions sometimes because they don't have to learn people to help them who make bad decisions going forward. It may save the planet, frankly, because the old people is the one destroying the planet. Hmm. Okay, okay, can I just, just say one thing very quickly about what you just said, Bertram? Sorry, Apollo. I just want to say this no thing problem, about right? let's follow our leaders. Yeah. Um, yes, we should listen to our leaders. <laughs> but more importantly, yeah, we know, we know these people... Yeah, and I'll give you the classic example. Yeah, the World Health Organization lies for fun. Let me say that again. The World Health Organization lies for fun. They will say something, and two years later, you'll find that that story was not true. They will tell you, like they I did back in the, in the 40s and 50s and 60s, Smoking is very healthy. It makes you look good. It makes you look cool. Yeah. But if you touch weed, oh, don't worry, you're going to get mad. Yeah. Let me tell you about them stories now today. Which are you more in danger of? Weed or tobacco? Tobacco. Yeah. So do you do gelatin? Yeah. Don't listen to everybody and think, oh, just because they no, said. No, but I think I don't agree with that analogy. Gospel. Tony, I don't agree with that analogy. Right. The difference between a pandemic, which we're seeing people actually dying, versus the corporation trying to manipulate your thoughts about sugar or cigarette, things that actually kill you and saying that's good for you. There's a difference between that and I actually know you have a disease that's dying. And when I say follow the leaders, it doesn't mean President Trump or Boris. It means the CDC, for example, the U.S., the Center for Disease Control, about prudent behavior, about washing hands, okay. as everybody talks about, okay. about avoiding crowds, about don't be a okay. to be at risk, right? But not about the analogy of drawing. Yeah. I'm not sure I buy into yeah. this whole... WHO. I, don't, I, I listen to myself, but I also follow. I'm not an expert in some of these fields. So what the experts say, I'm going to think about what the experts okay. say. And make an Should I follow that? Yeah. Okay. So let me just give you another example. Yeah. Your so-called experts, the CDC. Guess who the CDC are funded by? Monsanto. Monsanto are doing more damage to our planet than the CDC could ever tell you about. But do they ever tell you, don't go out and buy CDC, um, Monsanto uh, branded uh, genetically modified products? Do they ever tell you all that? They don't, because guess what? They're getting the money. Yeah? Let me give you another it's example. About money, man, Everybody will tell big, you, say, oh, let me tell you about, yeah. let, me tell, let me tell you about all these massive companies that are involved in, in cancer research, yeah? The biggest of which is cancer research. If you ring up cancer research tomorrow and you say to them, what should I do to avoid cancer? Should I stop eating meat? They'll say no. Guess why? Because they're and they're, yeah. And that tells you something. Yeah. I don't want to I don't want to be the, the 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 prophet of doom. But what I'm telling you is a lot of these so-called um Big leading companies, leading authorities yeah. on health yeah. and so on will tell you stuff that is not the truth, yeah? And until you do your due, your due diligence and you read, yeah? And if you ain't got, a, if you don't know about some of the things that go on in the world, yeah, go to my, and scroll through, because I expose these. I'm not saying I'm a conspiracy theorist, but I expose the truth. <laughs> Tony, you're a and conspiracy you theorist. Fact, yeah? <laughs> I'm not a conspiracy theorist, yeah? yeah. I don't get involved in conspiracy theories. But what I do get involved in is exposing the truth. Yeah? yeah Look at yeah. what Monsanto have done to Hawaiian Islands. Oh, yeah. yeah? Listen, I, I, all I, that, all, all but, I but, do but is... Tony, we're not saying... Wait, look, we're not saying that organizations are conflicted. We're not saying there is, isn't conflict that a lot of decisions organizations make. And they're not trying to influence decision makers to influence our thinking about what we should buy, not buy what we should do. Not disagree with that at all. Yeah. That does occur. Yeah. Much more covert than we even think it does. Gov you know, we, in the U.S., people complain about Russia trying to influence U.S. election, and the U.S. has done this sort of big enough time, right? Oh, gonna, the countries do this, so you can't complain about someone doing something to you that you have done to others or you're doing to others. And I'm not saying that. I'm saying you take the information you've gotten from all these sources and you make an informed decision about your own personal situation. Mm. But things like prudent hygiene in terms of how you behave. What is Monsanto? What is a corporation? You should be following those rules. I'm from, I grew up, I born in the UK, but I grew up in Jamaica, right? Washing your hands, 
makes your bread what? doesn't touch certain. There's some what? fundamental cleanliness things that you do, right? Yeah. There are things that you do fundamental, regardless of where you are. Did you get that from the No, they're from my great grandmother. <laughs> yeah, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, look, right. we, we, we know big corporations are, are dodgy. We know that we can't trust them. We can't trust them. Yeah. I mean that 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 one that the top one percent tax break that Trump gave the big corporations amounted to 2.7 trillion. And last week they were moaning about giving <laughs> Americans free testing for the virus, which by the way was already written in the plan and all it needed was the health minister to invoke it and i it was uh, one of the new yes. uh, democrats that 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 actually got her in, it got them into senate last week and 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 vote the, the, the bill she, she got the bill passed yeah she got the bill passed and the guy was saying yeah. i'll think about it and she was like no you don't need to think about it because you've been thinking about it for 8 years and it still hasn't oh. been signed off. It's and the yeah, fact, they, and the fact, and the fact of the matter is, you know, in America, you know, most people cannot afford healthcare anyway. Exactly. So, That's you know, the how, reason why how, how they are, passed the bill. How else are they gonna? How else are they gonna, are they gonna afford a testing kit? The, the bill was sitting on his desk weeks ago, and she emailed him a week before the Senate hearing to say. This is what yep. I need your approval on. He sat in the Senate saying, uh, yeah, I, I don't yes. remember. I don't remember. And she's like, but people need there to be tested. You go. You've got the authorization of doing it now. Yes. I'm not leaving here until you authorize it. And then the yes, other guy said, sir. yeah, okay, let's authorize free testing. Now Americans get yes, free testing. Sir. But but this is the Republicans. This is the people yes, who sir. everybody That's voted in to power. Yeah, they don't care about you. All they yes, care about is their, is their tax break. That's all they care about. They it's not the Tories. About so the yes, interesting thing about all this is that the, the, the interesting thing is that the I've always said the US is controlled by big business, right? Because if you have political, if you have resources, you can get you can influence political politicians about UK's how they the behave, same, man. how they vote. The how they, <laughs> don't disagree with that. But I'll say this though is and I, this may be controversial. I'll say this: I've been to the UK. I've seen your healthcare system. It's challenge like like the US doesn't insure a lot of people. Yours there, it is, it is like if it's free, there's a reason why it's free. I, it's, I've it's been there free. and I've it's, it's not free, it's doctors. included in it's included in your national health. It's it's not free <coughs> per se. No, it's, yeah. it, well, to, to me it's free taxes. because I pay yeah. Medicare taxes. I pay Medicare taxes here, mm -hmm. I pay national insurance there, I have a national insurance number there, just like I have a social security number here. Yeah. And I'm telling you, to me in the UK it's free, but you get what you pay for. Mm. It's free, but it's yeah, but the fact is that the reason why the NHS, the reason why the NHS is suffering is because these assholes in power have closed down a lot of hospitals and clinics. That's yeah. why, you know, that's why thing about, that's why, that's no, why there is this thing about the NHS on its, hand, on its knees. Yeah, yeah, anyway, guys, here's why the US would always be a prominent society, is that they take the best intellectual capital across the world here, they incentivize people. Because human beings, if they think they're innately good, they're sometimes fooling themselves. Mm -hmm. So if I incentivize you to come here and work or you're great at what you do and I pay you a amount of money, you're going to source the best talents, aren't you? It's just like a football team. Mm -hmm. No different concept. Madrid is paying a lot of money. They get the best people to go to Madrid. No matter where in the world they are, they, go pay, they want to pay Madrid or Barcelona. Mm -hmm. I view the U.S. that in some respects, in terms of, I'm going to pay you a lot of money for your mm -hmm. services. So why wouldn't I come here and have the best doctors? Even though the healthcare system may be flawed, there are benefits to it. I think they should have a two-tier system, which is you pay for your own insurance if you can. You also get free, you also have a free system, a society we all pay for. There is no optimum system with a Canada or the UK or Scandinavian country or the US. But I do think though, we have to be humane as people. We have to have empathy. And in doing so, you gotta allow people with basic necessities of life, and one of them is healthcare. Yeah, healthcare and we don't provide is, 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 a, a, is a right. Society, yeah. yeah. Healthcare is a right. Yeah, it yeah. should be a right. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's see what happens when Biden gets through and uh, see if he can uh, not be turned by Big Pharma. <laughs> yeah, that's that. Well, you and I have talked about this Apollo, which I think I, I think know. sometimes. Listen, that she Biden and Sanders did never said it before we wanted to. Yeah, the, the CNN are before. doing a Biden and <laughs> Sanders debate tonight, so that's going to be interesting to listen to. Right, guys. So should we leave it right there for today? I will say. I'll say. I'll say. Yeah. I'll say one more thing. Mm -hmm. You know, if if you want remedies, go for natural remedies. And that is what these, but that's what these big pharma companies are scared of. Mm. They're scared that the, that a lot of these um, natural remedies 
are going to overtake a lot of the chemicals that are out there. And that's why, and this is my theory, that um, Dr. Sebi passed away. Yeah, and, and and listen, that's the reason why um, that's the reason why you things like that's the reason why things like ho homeopathy and uh um, you know, all of the Chinese medicines, that's the reason why all of that acupuncture, that's the reason why that's not yeah. included. Some people can get it, but you have to yeah. work hard to. But that's yeah. the re they don't want nothing to do with homeopathy. Mm -hmm. They don't the NHS don't want nothing to do with it. Yeah. Why? Because you can't yeah, 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 but yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but a lot of us in the UK, a lot of the, a lot of us in the UK, we live near these places that offer acupuncture. Yeah, and I get Alligan acupuncture Brixton, regular so from my back. I, I get it on the Mark, regular so from my back. Mark, Pope's Road, my... Pope's Road. That there, there, there is, there is a mat. That there's a guy that that there's a guy that sells natural natural ingredients for your remedies. There's money in the there. medicine, man. There's money in the medicine. <laughs> That's how it works. There's money in yes, the medicine, and it, and that won't change. Yes, now, yes, now. Your, your, your most important medicine is your diet. Mm, That's yes, your most important, important medicine yeah. is your diet. All right, guys. I want to thank my panel. I want to thank Bertram from New York. I want to thank Tony. This is Twitter handle. Go and check him out. And I want to thank Ebony, who's now back from the US. Why that is just in time. I don't know how you made it through customs. In it. But listen, just want to thank I, everybody. I just through. <laughs> yeah, and listen, um, we're gonna have to think of a topic next week because uh we're gonna have to make this up as we go along. As I said, news readers, YouTube content creators now have got a very tough job in terms of having to facilitate what's going on in the world at the moment because as things shut down day by day, day by day. Um, that's really entertainment and that's really uh, news up updates is what we're going to be dependent on. So you're not going to stop getting videos from this channel. You're not going to stop getting our live stream shows on, on a Sunday evening. That's going to continue as we go, al go along and we'll just monitor it as, as I went in. Yeah, we will just monitor it. So thank you guys on the panel and uh, guys from the chat, I appreciate the commitment that you guys have. Um, to back in the show, please subscribe to the channel and thanks for your input. And uh, listen, we'll see you next week, man. Peace out. Be safe. Nice one, guys.